It being uh, May 21st at 7 p.m., I'd like to ask for um, call the meeting to order and move for an acceptance of the agenda. So moved. Second. Moved by Mr. Vignani and seconded by Ms. Canfield. Uh, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the May 21st meeting, uh, the first meeting after our annual election. So we'd like to welcome uh, Mrs. Karen Connolly to the board. Welcome, Karen, and congratulations. Thank you very much. I don't know if you want to say anything. Give you. <laughs> I can do it faster than that. I just want to thank everyone who voted uh, this past Saturday. It's very gratifying when people come out and vote. Um, and I would also like to acknowledge John Danahy, whose seat I'm taking, and for all the hard work he did for so many years. And I'm very happy to be here, even though some people think I'm crazy. <laughs> <laughs> crazy to do the job. Yes. 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 Well, crazy that. To do the job. <laughs> crazy to step up. Well, we welcome you. Glad to have you. And I just want to congratulate everybody out there that ran this weekend. It was a close race. A lot of races were close. Um, so thank you for running. Please continue to be involved. Um, we had a new school committee member, so Nicole Brandolini, who is from the next generation, which is great to see some new uh, folks step forward and, and take part in local government. So congratulations to all, and really excited about the Senior Center as well. So I'm sure at the end of the, the meeting we'll talk a little bit about that. So. Um, congratulations to that group as well. They worked really, really hard to get that done in a short time frame. So um, it's great news that we can move forward on that. So um, with the first order of business, since this is a new board, is the reorganization of the board as the vice chair. Um, um, just open up for a discussion. I know uh, we need to assign a new chairperson and then also a new vice chairperson. So um, any... Um, move to nominate Tony Vignani as chairman. All right, there's a motion to nominate Mr. Vignani as chair. Second. Second by Mrs. Canfield. Mm -hmm. uh, discussion? Um, well, I, you want, go, you want to go first? I Did have a lot to say, so I'll go last. No. <laughs> 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 <Okay>. Just kidding. <laughs> Welcome to the board, Karen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I wanted to jump in because we have uh, two, um, uh, members of this board that have served a very long time and I am um, been honored to serve with them and I'm, for the next three years anyway I'll be here um, and I think Tony has brought um, a perspective that um, is very necessary especially as we are in these tight um, budgetary times so I think you'll make a great chair. Well said. Anything else? We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Does that mean you do the vice chair? Uh, you're on a roll. Keep going. Okay. All right. Do I have a nomination for vice chair? I'd like to nominate Mr. Sean Harris. Second. Would you like to say yeah. something, Mr. Harris? Discussion. No, that's okay. <laughs> motion by Ms. Canfield, second by Mr. Bignani. Discussion? No? This will be you ready, Sean? You ready? The 32nd time he's been vice chair. No. Yeah. <laughs> no. no, I just <coughs> I should have said something a minute ago, and I was kidding, but... A lot of folks don't realize how much more work it is to be chairman. And I just want to thank Tony for stepping up. Um, you know, for, it's just probably twice or three times the amount of work. If there's an event, I don't care if it's during the week or the weekend, and none of us can make it, usually the chairman has to go no matter what. So you make a lot of sacrifices. <laughs> you make even a little more or a lot more as chairman. So. Thanks, and you Tony. strategically chose those comments after we all That's approved correct. this <laughs> <laughs> so that's right. We all get one vote. I know. <laughs> all right, so there being no discussion, uh, motion by Ms. Canfield, second by Mr. Vignani uh, for vice chair. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, so that's the reorganization. Tony and I are going to switch do we do seats. Do we do what? Clerk? Yeah, yeah the clerk is Oh, well. the clerk. Forget about the clerk. Paper. Okay. <laughs> um, oh, do I have a nomination? Is anybody interested in being the clerk? So. <laughs> <laughs> I would be honored to continue oh. to serve if you will have me. Really? Mm -hmm. I nominate Karen Canfield. I'll second <laughs> that. Continue being the clerk. Second. Nominated by Mr. Vignani, second by Mr. Harris. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you for Thank doing you, that. Thank you, Karen. We appreciate Thank it. It's <coughs> an honor. All right. So with that, we will change seats, and Mr. Vignani will conduct we'll the rest of the meeting. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. You can switch it up if you want. Nominate. Get to, I'm going to say Mr. Vignani. Are you okay with it? Fine. <laughs> oh, there you go. Well, we get the nameplates moved and everything. All righty. You can have everybody call him tomorrow. 
<laughs> they might notice the difference. <laughs> All right. Great. Well, thank you guys for nominating me. I'll try and do a good job. Um, the next item on the agenda is walk-ins. Are there any walk-ins here this evening? Yes, ma'am. Um, Jennifer Kuhn. Uh, Jennifer Kuhn, 20, Carrie Litchfield Lane. And um, I have two quick questions. Um, there one I wanted to ask Karen, new member of the board, what your um, opinion was on the new senior center, if you were actually for the senior center vote or against it. Um, I understand that Karen and Maura actually were not in favor. And I was just wondering if you had an opinion. I was in favor of it. You're in favor? Yes. Okay. And then um, my second question is, I was wondering if I could get some kind of schedule for the pipe replacement, for the water pipe replacement. We've been doing us picking and flushing, and I want to know when they're actually going to be replaced. So we're not just putting a Band-Aid on it, we're actually replacing them. I don't think we have an exact schedule for you, but it will be discussed here and it'll all be public when it's going to happen. So. Um, so currently today there is no schedule to start next week this summer or in the fall yeah, to replace any pipes no yes not true. this is there is there is yeah so that's <laughs> not correct there is a plan to finish up the final phase which i think we'll turn to kevin in a second to give me the dates so what i was talking to there's not a plan to do the next stage yet so okay kevin do you want to Give some sure. sort of outline um, of. Is it what we've been doing is we started on Oceanside Drive. We're putting a temporary line in place so that we can deactivate the old line and then put the new line in the place of the old line. So a lot of people have already called and said this guy's out there saw cutting Oceanside Drive. Um, there's a couple of deliveries of pipe, there's a Connex box, and there's pieces of equipment there. Mm -hmm. That is for replacement of that water line. Um, I believe. If we don't have it up already, there will be within the next week or two showing the contractor schedule of what they plan on doing. That will include Manhill Road. It will also be Gannett. A lot of what we're doing is service coyotes. We're taking the services off the old line. There's two lines in the road. Taking it off the cast iron line and putting it on the newer line. The newer line might still be 40 years old or 50 years old, but we're removing that 100-year-old line. Okay. So. Um, the schedule, we, we track all the water lines that we have, um, and it, it depends on, on the funding. We have a worst case scenario line that we go after, mm -hmm. um, and it, it's funding every year through the budget process. So is phase one currently on the website? Phase one? Phase one, that we're currently doing right now. Is there information on the town website? We're actually on phase three C. Right. And I do not know if the entire schedule is on the on the website yet. It would be on the water side or the engineering so side. So currently the ocean side is not online. There's nothing about that and where you're going next. There's no There's nothing on where we're going next. Correct. Director Just right, what just he and um, how many phases are there? Direct your <laughs> questions this way, ma'am. Oh one second. Okay. How many phases I was in <laughs> the phases would be based on whatever the funding is. The initial plan had five phases. And um, that's all been talked about for the last several years of reevaluating what the next phase will be. So Do that's probably something this board will discuss, but not tonight. Okay, so I'm interested in maps, where they're going, phases, and um, obviously financial. Okay. We'll be talking about it, I would guess, a lot over the next year. Okay. All right, thank you. Thanks. Should I just make a quick yeah. comment? Um, you, you stated that Mar and I were not in favor of the senior center. That's not quite accurate. We voted against the. Um, shift to the plan that was put forward. Once that was decision was made, I know, I, I think we all agreed that we would, as a board, support the proposal that was on the warrant. So we, we were in support of the proposal that went forward after we had our discussion. So I was at the Board of Selectmen meeting prior to the town meeting, and I believe it was understood that there was a 3-1 vote only because Ms. Moore and Mrs. What's your name? Correct. Ms. Curran was not there. Yes. Because I was absent. And that was to decide right. whether or not to move it to the new location. Okay. And I did inquire at um, the Board of Selectmen's office and was informed that it was a 2 3 vote. So I, I just think wanted the, to inquire. A little bit of the confusion, you're taking a little bit of context. So the discussion was do we stick with the old plan or the new plan? It wasn't about whether they wanted a senior center or right. not want a right. senior center. So their discussion, at that point in time, we were discussing do we knock down all of Gates 
or do we keep Gates and go? And that was what that vote was on. Okay, so at the Board of Selectmen meeting prior to the town meeting, there were three in favor and one not in favor. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, and now we have four in favor and one not in, I mean, excuse me, three in favor and two not in favor. Well, now we have it doesn't an matter old time passed. Questions. I just wanted yeah. to understood okay. actually where Karen and how everybody stood on the board. Right. With the vote that we voted on. Okay. Thank Which you. we both voted in the affirmative on town floor. So mm -hmm. that should tell you that as well. There you go. Okay. Thank you. Great. Are there any other walk-ins? Great. So seeing on, we will move on to the um, report of the town administrator. Jim? It's just got a little shorter because we were over the Oceanside pipe replacement. Um, <laughs> probably the big one is the Egypt Beach parking lot. Uh, if you go by there, you see that is not complete. Uh, we are delayed by the weather. We had six straight days of rain, so there's been no compaction. There's no ability to get that down. So it is running behind. Uh, it needs to dry out. Once it gets dried out, they'll put it down. The other issue now is because of the rain, the paving schedule is now all off. So we're not sure when we're going to get those pavers back. We'll get it up as quickly as we can with the <coughs> process material and get it all packed down. If we get delayed on the paving, we'll try to open the parking lot without the paving as soon as we can. It does not look like it'll be ready for this weekend. It's just too wet down there. Mm -hmm. uh, but they are working as quickly as possible down there, and we'll get that up as fast as we can. And again, if we have an issue with the paving, we'll pack it down, we'll open it until we can get the paving down there and get it going. As soon as who's we know, we'll let everybody know. Who's paving it, Jim? Kevin? It's actually C. Norton that are is doing the work. Right. And they're the same guys with the water. And are they paving it, or are they subbing that out to? it out. I thought the last I heard was the seller or another All right. company. Our specs okay. are pretty solid, so whoever paves it, you know, we'll be watching the, the thickness and everything else. Great. Thank you. So, Jim, just when you say you don't know, you know it's not going to be this weekend, but it won't be July 5th. No. It'll be no. within the next week or so after we'll, that. We'll get the parking lot done, all the work, notwithstanding the pavement. That'll be done depending on the weather, we should have that done by the end of next week. Okay, good. Uh, but that's going to be where are the paving companies because they've all been pushed back. Every other job has been pushed back. Tony, can I? Yeah. Can we put something out that just says that Egypt parking lot is closed for this weekend because yep. folks don't always yeah, drive by and know what's happening. Know it should, should be going out Perfect. Today. Thank you. Today. Awesome. We'll put an electronic signboard down there too, Kev. If we can. Yeah. We'll put a signboard down there too, just letting people know. Any other questions on Egypt? Uh, a couple more things. The water main flushing is continuing. We're doing that all over town. I know they flushed Front Street last week about 3 o'clock in the morning, so they are hitting all the places on town, starting what they think are the worst areas and moving around. When we're finished that, uh, again, we will flush until the reservoir stops overflowing. Once it stops, we will stop flushing. And then when it's done, we'll get a report to the board where the flushing was done, where the pigging was done. Uh, and then we're going to do the survey that we talked about earlier to see if people are seeing a difference with all the work we've done. I can't imagine on some of those dead ends that we talked about earlier that people aren't seeing a huge difference in their water quality because those pipes haven't been touched in, since they went in. So uh, that's continuing. The water department is doing a lot of good work on that. A uh, project that's been in the works for quite a while, the school crossing out front here as part of the middle school project, that bid will open on June 6th. Yes. Uh, so we'll finally get that school crossing up over the summer. It'll be in oh, place good. for next year. Uh, the last thing, uh, you mentioned the senior center. It passed. Uh, the next step for the senior center project will be going before the planning board uh, and then the architect will start on the bid documents getting those ready and going out to bid so uh, once they finish with the planning board and the planning board makes whatever tweaks they're going to make then the architect will get the bid documents together and get ready to go out to bid okay. any questions on yeah is yeah. the is it on the planning board agenda this week this week i think i believe so isn't it on this weekend no it's not um, no it's not <laughs> Thank you, Jim. You're welcome. <laughs> you just talked about it this morning. I'm just confused. But. It's the 23rd of June. We'll be when that's before you again. Okay. Yes. And we're giving the handle Okay. Projected bid opening date to you, you're just. You're probably talking construction in October ish. All right. It's not even on there. By the time you get the bid documents done, uh, I can't tell you, Sean, off the top of my head, yeah, no, that's right, filed yeah. sub bids. Right, yeah. Maybe electrical, maybe a filed sub so bid in that in the project. So in the fall, with any luck. Yeah, you're right, talking okay. the fall. 
All right. Get the Thank bed you. back and it's done and get it out to bed by the end of the summer. Great. Thanks, Tom. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good. 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 Two, two quick comments there. One, you brought this up at the last meeting, you said it again now, the water flushing, that we're able to do it. We haven't done a lot in the past. And um, again, this is water that's not going over the dam into the ocean that we're using to flush these pipes, which is a huge um, improvement to us cleaning these pipes and getting, right. them, getting them more active. So I think that's a great idea. And then um, the senior center, you mentioned the bids documents about that. You know, the board will also be dis discussing the next steps that we have to do in light of the fact that the senior center passed, like what are we gonna do with the other gates building? What are we gonna do with other parking and other issues on that property? So that'll be coming up before us and we'll be yep. discussing that in the upcoming weeks as well, so. Yep, and well, that's all I have for tonight. I'm gonna to be quick and easy. The old building. One second, one second. The old building, that's what? the old building. The old gates, yeah. yeah. No, the old Council on Aging. Oh, down the road, down right, the road. That as well. Sean, yeah. a good point. The old Council on Aging building, what are we gonna do that as well? Down the road. Yeah. yeah. I have one question. One second. Ms. Um, Burbank? The meeting for uh, the senior center is the 27th of June. I apologize. June 27th for the senior center planning. Thank you. Great. I have a question. Is there Just a your name and address. Oh, Jennifer Q, mm -hmm. 20, Gary Litchfield Lane. Um, is there a date for the demolition? No. 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 That'll be part of the bid. That'll all be part of the bid. And nothing will start before October, you're thinking? I'm just guessing by the time they get the bid documents done, they get the bid documents out, they've all gone through them, they've awarded it. October's probably a good time. It could be September, it could be, but it's going to be in the fall before we start doing anything over there. Um, I just wanted to mention that um, there's certain communities that actually will let residents or carpenters or whatever go in and actually dismantle the building and reuse the windows, the doors, um, whatever they want. They're, um, they have a certain time that they're allowed to go in and take and dismantle the building. It's something that might be a consideration. Interesting. Yeah, we'll think about it. Great. Anybody else? All right. We'll move on to our scheduled items then. Right on time, as I might, might add. <laughs> so efficient. <laughs> so That's um, why we elected you chair. So we have a, a few recognitions this evening. Um, is someone going to come up and do these, Jim, or do you want me? Uh, the only one I think Chief Stewart is going to do, the one for uh, Teresa Duggan, okay. dispatcher, the one for the library. Yep, that one's on hold, yep. Yep. Chief, you want to? My pleasure to have been asked to come and acknowledge uh, Dispatcher Terry Duggan on 35 years of service. Uh, <laughs> Dispatcher Duggan has, uh, she'd been obviously with us for 35 years. She worked out of the old building when we, we didn't have 911. It was a 1212 line. <laughs> whether it was an emergency or a business call. And, uh, you know, she's been, she's seen the technological changes in dispatch from, uh, you know, handwritten and typed logs to- Punch uh, cards. <laughs> <laughs> to the most complicated of a, a recent system, the new generation 911 system, which she's learned. Uh, most recently, she was one of the first dispatchers who was cross-trained to be able to handle police and fire, uh, you know, for, the bulk of her career, she's been a police dispatcher yep. uh, and a 911 call answerer for, uh, you know, and as I've said before to the board over the years, I get the utmost respect for our 911 call answers. The, uh, I go back and I listen to a lot of calls and I'm, I'm telling you, they do a great job and Terry has done a tremendous job for a long time. <clears throat> You look very uncomfortable, but <laughs> <laughs> if you like to say something before we do. Nope, that's okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, and the board will speak as well, but I want to thank you. That That's such a critical role in the whole <coughs> emergency care in the town. Unfortunately, I've had to, to call it, you know, several times over the last 15, 20 years that I've been here. And 
I, I don't know who I'm talking to and nobody does, but I know it's always been great service and for doing something for 35 years like that and uh, and doing a great job and going through technology, you know, we applaud you and we thank you for your service to the thank town. You. Um, anybody else want to parlay that? or? Yeah, I mean, Terry, thank you. Uh, your service, your dedication to the community is incredible. And to stay in that job for 35 years is really a testimony to your perseverance, your professionalism. You know, there have been a lot of changes, and I'd love to hear, too, like how you, how you think, you know, being there in the last two years has changed the way in which you do your job and how it's enhanced. I think it would be interesting if, if you would allow her to speak for a minute. And I, if you don't want to, that's okay, but I think it would be really nice to hear from a, you know, a veteran oh, it, dispatcher it's, on it's, the change. It's been a lot of changes, definitely. It, uh, learning the, the fireside, yeah, I'm just, there, I mean, you're trying to learn it one way, and you, five different people, you have to do it their way. It's like, you so say you never know, and you just do the best that we can. You adapt. Well, that's why yeah. you're so successful. You're an adapter. Terry has promised me she's not retiring until next January 20th, which is great, because we have a lot of new <laughs> young dispatchers, and uh, Terry's part of the training process up there, and uh, nice. you know, I'm, I'm fortunate to have her for another uh, several months. Congratulations. Thanks. Not only were they translated, transitioning from the old station to the new station, from police and fire desks to public safety desks, <laughs> they also had a transition to the next gen 911 system, which is the next generation of the 911, which includes text 911, oh, yeah. cell phone 911. So, it, you know, they made the leap to the new station, then they're making the leap to a whole new technology. So, it's been a lot going on up there in the yeah. past uh, past couple of years, and they've handled it flawlessly. Is it getting any? Does it? Now that maybe the dust has settled, any easier? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Wow. Well, I just want to say thank you. I just can picture sitting there not knowing what that, you know, the 911 call could be a mistake or it could be life or death right there. That's just the not knowing. And then you have to be so calm. We all hear about the on the news when something goes wrong. It can be in California, but they always have that. You're, you're on tape. And so a lot of pressure. Thank you. Oh, I'm sure you're helping right now. <laughs> well, no, <laughs> she's there. <laughs> well, well, thank you very much. We do have a, a little token of appreciation for you. So if you don't mind coming up and have taking this up. box off our hands. <laughs> oh, so, nice. Well, first, let me congratulate you. Congratulations. <laughs> and thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations, Terry. Thank you. Yeah. You, open that now? <laughs> <laughs> you don't get one, Mike. That could be candy. You might want to share. <laughs> that thank looks you. like Welch Company Thanks. paper. Yeah. Welch Company paper. Yes. I know. <laughs> Yeah. It isn't. <laughs> there couldn't be enough in there for 35 years. Yeah, no. Okay, so we'll keep moving right along. We have a joint appointment for the Situate Housing Authority um, with the Situate Housing Authority. I see some members here. Catch up. Good evening. Congratulations. Hello, Hello Stephen. <laughs> Tammy. Steve, thank you. Who's the chair? Are you? Yes. Steve, you're still the chair. Good. So if you want to kind of, do you want to give an overview or do you, I mean, there was a, I'll give a quick overview, then you can fill in all the blanks. So there was um, a member that resigned and um, they were the state appointee mm -hmm. and they had to be reappointed by the state within 120 days. And if they're not, then it comes before us. Correct. And the board of selectmen can appoint somebody and that's where they are. You've nominated somebody. Um, and that's what we're here to discuss right now. Correct, yes. Yeah, so it be a, a joint appointment between our board and the, the Board of Selectmen for, uh, it's a term of uh, four years and eight months for the replacement of the state appointee. Um, so um, <laughs> with that, you know, we shouldn't have to be back before you uh, anytime soon in order to, go, uh, you know, go do that. And Jill's been on our board for many years now this is the first time that we've uh, been here and, and uh, she's great and uh, look forward to you know have her uh, continue back on the board and to you know know that we have her for just you know another five years is um, uh, you know is great so a relief <laughs> great and the reason why it's that long is because she resigned right after her term started right 
Uh, it was, or, uh, yeah, it was Michael Collins. Anyway, who Michael had, Collins. Yeah, oh, he had been oh, sorry, on the board yeah. for uh, many years. And um, um, yeah, so his schedule and, yeah. and you know, whatnot, uh, you know, was conflicting with, you know, him being able to serve. So, you know, it worked out, you know, that um, uh, he needed to resign. So right. um, that brings us here tonight. Does anyone have any questions for Steve or for Joe? I just have one. Yeah. Is there an opening on the board, or are you a four-member board and then one state appointee? I always get So there's, there's uh, one additional um, uh, opening. We're waiting for DHCD is making um, some kinds of changes to whether or not there should be a uh, tenant representative. So we're waiting to see what the uh, outcome on that with the legislature um, you know, for that other uh, opening, uh, you know, and then we can be able to go from there. But we do have enough of a quorum in order to be able to conduct business. You just re reelected, right, John? Yes. Congratulations. <laughs> thank, yeah. you, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions or comments? Um, I just want to say I've known Jill for over 20 years very well, and uh, I know that she's very dedicated to this uh, board, so thank I would think she'd do great representing us at the state. Great. And there's a lot going on, clearly, yeah. in your arena. So um, glad to have seasoned um, people that know what they're doing and take us to the next level. Great. So at this point, I think we need a motion. Sure. Oh, no. Do we have to do roll call? Motion a roll first, call? and then I'll do the roll call. Okay. okay. So can I have a motion? Move to appoint Jill Caffrey as the state appointee to the Board of uh, Situate Housing Authority for a term of four years and eight months, effective May 24, 2019. Second. Motion by... <laughs> Scanfields, I haven't done these yet. Second by Mr. Harris. Further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, Stephen Coulter? Aye. Uh, yes. Uh, John Dwayne? Yes. Tammy Durante? Yes. And Jill Captain? <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, and the board of selectmen, Karen Kitwell? Can't feel? Karen Codley? Yes. Yes. Sean Harris? Yes. And Anthony Yes. So it's unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank you. And yes, congratulations thank you. and congratulations. best of luck. And thank you. Congratulations, thank you. Jill. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. All right, moving on. To the um, next item, we have an outdoor entertainment permit for the Methodist Church. Is Bob? Bob? Is it Amweg? Amweg, yes. Amweg, yes. Right. Yeah. I attend the Harbor United Methodist Church, and we would, we're would we participating in the first Friday events that the township is hosting this year, and we'll, we'll be hosting a fish fry. That's a great idea. And we'd like a permit for outdoor entertainment on the premises of the church. Uh, for three nights, March 7th, July 5th, and September 6th. I think it's June 7th. I'm sorry, June 7th. July yes. 5th and September oh, yeah. 6th. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah. Okay. Yes. All right. So there's a typo in the, in the yeah. okay. motion there, so whoever makes it just be sure. So tell us a little bit about it. I, so you're going to have a fish fry open to the public? It'll be open to the public. Mm -hmm. um, we hope to have <laughs> it well attended. Um, we're trying to reintroduce the church to the community mm -hmm. and and be an active participant in the community events. Right. Um, we feel it's a, it's a family friendly um, dinner, um, very affordable dinner um, as an alternative to people that might not want to participate and spend a great deal of money at some of the the other local restaurants. Great. Do you, what's, do you know what the price is? Or it'll be ten dollars for the meal. Great. And, uh, Children, I believe, are six dollars. Right. 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 Um, there'll be three events um, with the outdoor entertainment on June seventh. Um, there'll be a, a four-piece band, a Doc Ellis. I believe he's a local band that many of you might know. Um, I'm new to the area, so I don't know these. Um, on July fifth, there'll be a Sean Caulfield. It's a solo singer, uh, guitar and vocals. And on September 6th, there'll be Talking Machine, which is an uh, acoustic guitar and uh, two singers, a male and a female. Mm, sounds singer. good. What are the hours? And uh, 6 um, to 8 p.m. 6 to 8 p.m.? Yes. And the, is the first one amplified? Is Doc Ellis 
probably amplified on mm -hmm. test. I believe that's amplified, mm -hmm. yes. And then, um, then I the believe they're all amplified. They're, 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 they're well, you said the second one was acoustic. The third one is an acoustic amplified. guitar. I, I don't know. There's the second one, Sean Caulfield, is a guitar and vocals. I don't know if it's acoustic or not. Right. right. Any questions? I, I see that you notified the abutters, so no, yes. no concerns there. Okay. Yes. I think it's a great idea. Yeah, it's, Doc Ellis is pretty toe-tapping. You're going to have trouble shutting it down at 8 o'clock. But um, I think it's a great marriage to the um, activities in the harbor and gives families an opportunity to participate right. and yeah. walk over. It's I think it's a really course. inspired idea. Good. Right. And it's a Friday evening. It's from 6 to 8. First so Friday, sweet. That's great. Um, no further comments. Can I have a motion? Move to grant an outdoor entertainment permit to Bob Amwag of the Harbor United Methodist Church located at 55 First Parish Road for live music on June 7th, July 5th, and September 6th, 2019 from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Second. That's a motion by Mrs. Curran, second by Mr. Harris. Further discussion? Any abutters here? I don't see any. <laughs> from the board? Great. Right. All in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Thank Good you luck. very much. Good luck. Enjoy. <coughs> Please. I'm going. <laughs> June 6th. I got dancing shoes. Toe tapping? <laughs> Toe tapping. <laughs> wow. I, I mean, wondered. I Can I, Mr. Yeah. Chair, may I? Did you say Friday nights? Yes. Yes. Isn't June 6th a Thursday night? No, it's the 7th. June 7th. Yeah. Oh, I did say June seventh. Okay, good. Yes. Okay, I hopefully I read it right. right. <laughs> okay, you scared me. Sorry. Okay. Never mind. <laughs> you guys are a tough crowd. Well, I want to make sure we did it right. All right, moving right along then. Um, the next item is um, a discussion of both for Knights of Columbus, Knights of Columbus uh, Carnival Special Event. Mark Brady and uh, Bill Limbaugh. <laughs> not your first rodeo <laughs> no not yeah. the first time in case anybody doesn't know me I'm Mark Brady <laughs> and I'm Bill and Buck Great. thanks guys you want to uh, for those thousands of people watching give them a quick <laughs> recap of what you're asking for yeah we're asking for our uh, ability to have our annual Knights of Columbus Carnival uh, this year from uh, July 9th through the 13th um, fireworks on Friday and Saturday night uh, this is our 66th year wow. it'll run from about 7 o'clock till no later than 11 o'clock at night um, Great. the carnival will come into town very early on Monday morning set up uh, we've already talked to the DPW uh, about their new regulations and so forth and uh, agreeing to a plan for the carnival on them. Uh, and we're still going to meet with the uh, Sergeant Gil Martin to go over the police setup and so forth. So. Right. So we did get a report sure. from all the departments right. where they gave their comments. Mm -hmm. um, and um, nothing out of, too out of the norm. Um, I know they did request for the generator to go in a certain place. Is that where you always put it anyways? Or? They did that last year, yeah. <laughs> we've moved it and put it where they asked us to put it, yes. Okay. Good. And where are the vehicles? Where are, you, where are they going to park all the vehicles after they set up? Back Not by on the, the lot. <laughs> right. Do they go back by the wastewater treatment? Uh, I think last no. year they went down to the Marshfield Fairgrounds. Oh, you did? Yeah. Okay. Right. Hmm. Any questions from the board? We're going to um, just maybe bag those signs. Did that help last year? The one way? I know it was a concern. I, I don't know if it ended actually, up, didn't ended do it. Up changing it, I don't think. I think right. uh, in the at the beginning they were going to and then at the last minute I think they said they just okay. let the traffic flow that way and people right. realized it, yeah, and it worked go out the other way right. so, but okay. I mean, if they want to we can do, you know, we can do that though. no I just didn't know if that's something you did last year and if, if it was um, it was success or not plan I remember at the last minute it kind of got changed though. all right the one way it can't way. right that has to right in front of CVS has to be both ways yeah well no I'm talking in the back yeah so the back is just right. we're going to leave it the way it is doesn't it have to? You can't go around by it's the bandstand. No, no, no. So but you have to make. We, <coughs> oh, was it only one yeah, way so in? Just be coming in from right. the movie theater and okay. coming out the other end. Oh, yeah. is that? Oh, we didn't yeah. make it both ways. Well, we, Mark and I had talked about it. Mm -hmm. I guess you didn't do it. I so I, I there was I talk maybe to make it go both ways right. for 
just during the carnival, but I guess it worked out just the one can leave yeah. it the way it is. There weren't any issues, yeah. Good. Questions or comments? Nope, it's a great cause. I know we usually give you this opportunity to sort of share what you give back to the community as a result of this, not putting on the spot, but if you wanted to share any information. Yeah, I mean, the Knights of Columbus is basically set up to help the community situate. Everything we do is to give back. This is our main fundraiser to support our you know, our building and so forth so that we can have the opportunity uh, to do things for people such as the community Christmas, uh, Boy Scouts, all these youth athletic teams, all the high school teams, um, food pantry, we've given to basically everybody. The use of our building also is a big part of it too because a lot of these places don't have their own places to meet and uh, have events and we let them use it too. So it's, and this is what really keeps the engine running. So thank you. Important. Thank you for yeah, that. And you're being a little bit modest there because you guys give to anything. <laughs> so if, if something pops up and there's a family in need or if there's a situation mm -hmm. in town, the Knights are always right there first to donate to, to help Absolutely. help do it. So yep. um, it's a great cause, and like you said, this is the big the big event. So <laughs> this is it, yeah. and the big mission. <laughs> there you go. Great. Well, right. No further questions. Uh, I just appreciate that you have fireworks on my birthday every year. So thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> we actually had a call this year. Uh, Somebody was have planning their reunion, their class reunion. <laughs> wanted to know when the carnival was because they wanted to have it during the fireworks. <laughs> Excellent. That's a good idea. And it's a business yeah. generator. There you go. Yeah. Great. Motion? Yes, please. Move to approve a special event permit to William Limbacher for the Knights of Columbus Carnival from July 10th, 2018 to July 14th, 2018, with setup on July 9th and takedown on July 14th in Cole Parkway, pending certificate of liability insurance. Second. All right. Are those dates correct? That's what I was looking at. The ninth is Tuesday. That's the day. It runs the 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th, and 13th. Correct? So is it set up on July 8th? Yes. All right. Um, amend to July 8th as a setup date. Okay. And what day did you say? Clean up on the 13th? Take down on the 14th? 14th, yes. Yep. Okay. Yep. okay. That's, that's correct. So that's a motion by Ms. Curran, second I'll by second. Mr. Harris. Yes. Further discussion? Any in the audience? On the board? Mm -mm. Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 It is unanimous, five to zero. Hope for good weather. We have right. one more, we have one more to do, um, oh. Oh, which sorry. is the special event fee all right. waiver. Let me get back to that. So there is an event fee that we charge and you're asking us to waive the fee? What's the amount? Does someone have that? I think it's a hundred dollars a day. I think it's a hundred dollars, right? Yeah. There's no fee in the background. Yeah, it's yeah. hundred dollars. Okay. Is that what it is, Lorraine? A hundred dollars a day? It's a hundred dollars for the event. hundred dollars oh. for the event? Yes. Okay. So... The individual uh, departmental piece would still apply over the month, the special okay. event. Yeah, there's going to be so no DGW police fire. Right. Okay. Wait, does anyone have a problem with waiving a hundred dollar fee? No. No. Can I have a motion? Move to waive the special event fee for the 2019 Knights of Columbus Carnival. <coughs> All other department fees will apply. Second. Motion by Mr. Harris, second by Ms. Canfield. All, uh, any further discussion? Seeing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Thank you, guys. Great. Thank, Thank you. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thanks. Right. Right along. It's not here. There's nothing from the line. I think it's just a discussion. So the next uh, topic of discussion is the Memorial Day event. Don Knapp, the Veterans Day. Don, how are you? Great. Yeah. Uh, good evening, everyone. I just wanted to uh, come from you to um, announce again our annual Memorial Day observance, parade, and celebration <laughs> uh, ceremony on the common. Um, as usual, we'll, it'll start off with a flotilla um, out of the harbor. Um, again, just on this event here, knowing that it's space limited, um, obviously if you have a, a boat or a vessel and you can get out on scene, that's fine, but um, you know, just so the public knows that it is limited space. So, um, so that would be out of the harbor master's office. Um, what time is that, Don? That is at 8. That's going to, um, yeah, they'll cast off around 8 and go out to, usually they go right out to the bellboy 
and weather permitting, mm -hmm. and um, and uh, honor the uh, those lost at sea. Um, after that, uh, the next event would be um, everyone's going to be forming up here in front of the town hall um, between <laughs> 10 and 10:30 for the parade, which will have stepping off at 10:30 sharp, and it will proceed um, up uh, First Parish um, to the Common, and then once we you know usually get everybody up there, we try and step off on that around 11:15, 11:10, and um, and so it'll be the same as every year. Um, We'll have our guest speakers. We have the two bands, uh, the high school band, the um, intermediate school band, uh, the Girl Scouts, Brownies, and all of them will be singing also. Uh, the Boy Scouts will be helping out with the Pledge of Allegiance and all that. So um, that should be it. It's, um, we hopefully try and keep it under you know, two hours um, and have great weather and get <laughs> through it. It'll be uh, a nice event. Great. Who's the guest speaker? Uh, so, yeah. so what we've been doing over the last year is uh, trying to keep it under two hours. We've been just looking at our schedule and saying we got enough speakers to kind of fill the, the docket. So obviously starting right off with Bob, introducing everyone, and then we have um, the invocation, um, the Boy Scouts. And then we have new, obviously we started with the uh, ambassador of the Project 351 with the eighth grader. So we um, obviously left space for that. Uh, we feel that's very important and want to uh, support her, the community support her. So, um, so that we'll have that and then obviously John will have his, um, his moment on the podium. Who's John? Actually, it'll be me. Oh, tell me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh okay, so we, I, didn't, I didn't know that, so I'll, I, I, I'll update that, but usually, yeah, they'll go on, so that's why I had that. Um, so you will. I'll keep it under an hour. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, I think Sean, Sean might have the wreck. You might want to like talk Sean. to him. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, remember the Gettysburg Address? <laughs> Short. <laughs> but, uh, no, that's good. Um, and then, uh, obviously, like I said, um, the, the bands will perform. We'll have the, uh, again, the other thing that we added in was uh, the reading of the names of all the veterans that have passed since last Memorial Day with the bell. So again, using the time on that, I think it's um, is valuable. So that's why, um, again, we, we'll do the flag ceremony and, um, and then uh, that should be it. Good. So it sounds like it's very similar to the last 24 years. Yep. Um, and don't rush it. It's a great event. Yeah. You know, it's it, it usually like is it. under two hours, and hopefully the weather will, will work with us, and uh, um, we'll enjoy the day. So, so that's um, what we're hoping for. The weather looks good, knocking on wood. But again, if if uh, in climate weather, if it's not, I mean, like crazy, like we've had the last couple of days, the lightning, sideways rain, uh, we'll have that ceremony again at the Gar Hall. But again, the public has to know that it's limited seating. I think it's a hundred capacity in there. So, yep. and it's parking. Nice. So, yeah, it'll be good. Any questions for Don? Yep. Any no. questions from the audience? Great. Well, you don't need a vote. We'll be there. Yep. Um, <laughs> and um, pray for good weather. Great. Thank uh, you very much. Know Thanks, know. Thank right. you. Thanks, Donald. <coughs> <coughs> All right. Next item on the agenda is um, a, a discussion of vote for the South River Dredge contract. <coughs> Howie Kruzberg, Vice Chair, um, Waterways Commission. Hey, Howie. Good evening. How are you today? Very good. Uh, this this project's been a long time coming, <laughs> and we've stayed the course. And it's uh, a pleasure to report that it's a cooperative effort between the state, the town of Situate, and the town of Marshfield, all working together. We have a ha navigational hazard in the mouth of the South River that needs to be addressed, particularly at low tide. The way this works is Mass Works Infrastructure Grant is $555,500, matched by the Town of Situate, $277,500, and the Town of Marshfield, $277,500. We went out to bid last fall. Unfortunately, we only had one bidder. And it was uh, much in excess of our expectations. The reason for that is there's, this grant is available to many communities around the Commonwealth. Everyone's taken advantage of it. We're in competition with 
Boston as well as, in particular, Plymouth, who's doing a, uh, doing a massive dredge job right now. So we decided to uh, regroup and rebid this this spring. Uh, and we're pleased to say that uh, we had three bidders this time. Uh, and the bid that you're to see before you is from Burnham Associates for $816,495. Uh, if, if you move forward with this bid, uh, our plans would be to have a pre-dredge meeting, to talk with the contractor to work out the logistics, as well as a public meeting to discuss with the public what it's going to mean as far as the actual construction. We tentatively uh, see this project beginning in July, mid-July, oh, really? lasting four to six weeks. Hmm. Uh, and tentatively, we're talking right now, work that happened Monday through Friday with no work on the weekends. Okay. The uh, Situate Harbor Master with the Marshfield Harbor Master uh, will assist in providing security, navigational, and, and boating traffic control during the process. So there's a, a few things going on. Right. So we'll open up for the board. What's un so unusual about this is that it isn't July. It's mm -hmm. typically in the winter, so it's going to be a, a challenge for those, you know, people who, you know, might be going out during the week. And, uh, you know, we had discussed that at Waterways, you know, would can they get around while they're working or can they work, be off to the side? But it, it's it's going to be difficult at certain tides, but it's something that has to be done. That's, as Howie said, much needed. So. Yeah, that was going to be my question about access to boaters during the project, but it's just going to be difficult. It's a difficult area. It, it's very, very shallow. At a minus tide, it's, people are hitting bottom. Uh, it's very narrow, mm -hmm. and as well as there's a very strong current there. So it's got its challenges before we even get to the boaters' needs. The net net right now is on a real negative tide. Boaters can't get into and out of the river anyway. So this will give us some relief to that. So two other quick questions on that is, so the dredging material, what happens to that? Is that get barged out or did we end up? Barged out. We I'm can't sure. use it? No. Um, and will it impact the passage on the North River at all while they're doing it? Well, or it, how much will it impact? It, it depends on how far in, you know, they'll be at, heading towards Trons Island. Uh, we hope not. We don't expect so. Okay. But that's a very heavy, heavily used area. Mm -hmm. so. There'll be some impact when the barge is going in and out. Right. Okay. Uh, the barge won't be, there'll be no work done on the weekends. I think 5 o'clock Friday afternoon, they have to be done and out of the way. Uh, so the weekends will be free. Uh, so there will be some disruption when that barge is going in and out, but that's not going to be major. Uh, what type of notification to the boaters, how, we, how do we let any, I mean, I know it's probably pretty much local boaters in there, but any sort of communication that's going to go out to them? Well, a, a couple of things. We are planning on a public meeting. A pre-meeting, yep. To discuss that, so get that out in the open. And then there's a notice to mariners that's published by the Coast Guard. Okay. And then we expect we'll have a notice in there letting them know that there's a challenge. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, I'm just curious to know where is the dredging material going, and is it anyone paying for it? it? seems like there's a lot of dirt and sand being moved around, and we always have to pay for what we get, but... Unfortunately, at one point we tried to use the spoils to, for beach nourishment and yeah. that didn't work. So we need to take it to the offshore site, which is about 10 miles out. And it just... Every time you handle it, it gets very expensive. Yeah. yeah. So mm -hmm. taking it to a barge, to a truck, and then trucking it, and then taking it, it gets very, very expensive. It's just cheaper to take it. And well, it I just know that at one point we were looking to get material from um, a river up in New yeah. Hampshire. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, uh, we were going to have to pay for it. <laughs> This is um, more silty material. It's really not so suitable for what we're looking what for. The material the stuff is. that It'll comes out of New Hampshire is a lot yeah. grainier, a lot rockier, actually. Yeah. Um, so it stays. This would. It's really just silt that we don't want to just wash off and put on the beach. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Uh, so Howie, just I'm a non-boater. Um, <laughs> layman terms, we're going to put a huge barge at across from the spit at the open of the South River. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna. There's a bunch of dirt there that boats can't get through, so you're gonna dig that dirt up and make it deeper and wider. 
exactly. How much? How <laughs> That's so well for well, it. Yeah. <laughs> <Pretty good, yeah. laughs> so how far do you like? What's the distance of dredging? Is it just right in that area, like a no hundred yards, or is basically it? starts where the North and South River join. It goes all the way uh, past Trounce Island, and it makes a hard left turn there, and then we'll go up uh, what we're calling Sector A. Uh, around the next bend. That's not a very good description, but that's the best they can do without a picture. It's okay. far. So you go, <laughs> you go down past Roach? No, no. No, no. no. <laughs> no you're not, you're, oh, you're going towards the bridge. That's right. correct. Okay. Towards the bridgeway. Gotcha. That's correct. That's where that area is. Okay, gotcha. Good. How, many, how many cubic yards do you recall? Hot. I don't know. All right, all right. <laughs> okay, all right. Well, the good thing is the state's paying for half of it. Yep. Marshfield's paying for a quarter of it, yep. and um, it needs to be done. So it really needs we're to not be done. we're not allowing on this project. They're not doing 24-hour dredging. Right, that was a question, and we said I didn't think that was a road we wanted to get on to have dredges right off people's houses in the middle of the summertime. Yeah, uh, they do do it on other projects, but those are usually projects in the winter time or late in the fall when people's windows are closed. So uh, we'll be buttoning it up at night and, and getting out of there. So is it optional to do it at another time, or is this? Is this our slot? Mm -mm. Is that why the quote is where it is? Because of resources. Yeah, that's correct. But okay. well, there's only a there's only a couple windows a year because of fish migrations and fish patterns and things like that. Oh. This is a window that usually you aren't allowed to do it. Uh, but the state said, yeah, okay, they let us change our permit. Our permit originally was for the, the fall and winter dredge, but everybody else is dredging. There was again nobody available. The dredge bid we got before was seven hundred thousand dollars more than this bid. That's why the exact came same in. project. That's why I came in low is because of the timing. Right. Mm -hmm. So right. because well, it's, it's in the middle of summer though. It's they're looking for work. That's yeah. right. The Plymouth so. dredge is a is a later dredge. So well, I'm glad we're going to take some heat for it because we don't want to see a barge out there. But at least it's not there on the weekends when it's busiest, and that's what you negotiated in there. So. Well, it needs to get done. Is it super loud? The actual process? Okay. So I mean, it's basically it's a big steam shovel that just picks it up. It's a mechanical dredge. Just picks it up and it's not like on the barge. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's like a road project. It's not. Kids really love dredgers. <laughs> It'll be cool. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be cool. Right. I'll probably have to Field take a ride out and check it out on a nice day. We'll take you out in a boat time. Okay. <laughs> Any questions from the audience? You get seasick. Any more from the board? Nope. Can I have a motion? Move that the Board of Selectmen award the contract to dredge the South River to Burnham Associates of Salem, Mass. for $816,495. Second. Motion by Ms. Canfield, second by Mr. Harris for the comments. So the only thing I will make just note is that even though the bid is for eight hundred sixteen thousand dollars, we're only responsible for two hundred seventy-seven thousand mm -hmm. dollars of it. Mm -hmm. That being said, all so in favor? Aye. 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 It is unanimous, five to zero. Thanks, Howie. I think one you more. may be here one? for an update, right? Sure. <laughs> double, double header. Great. <laughs> so um, the next item at 7:55 is a update on the municipal marina pe pedestal project, and how we, as the vice chair of waterways, is going to talk about that. Yeah, this this project is a significant upgrade for the patrons of uh, Cole Parkway, as as well as the Citroen Marine Park marinas. It provides new pedestals, which includes electricity for the boaters, cabling, water, and lighting. So it, it's a comprehensive approach to it. Uh, over the years, we've been putting on the pedestals and taking the, the docks out of the water during the winter and then having to put them back on. Uh, and that, that creates wear and tear. We've solved that by leaving the, the docks in the water all year round and using de-icers to keep them such. We got a, an additional hit uh, a year ago, March 2018, with a storm that really affected many of the pedestals we had. They were underwater and not usable. So it was a chance for us to, to upgrade this. Uh, we'll be, we've purchased and, and they're on site right now, 76 new pedestals for both marinas. Uh, they've been, they've been uh, delivered and, and installation is well underway. It's not complete yet, but it's well underway. So there's uh, a lot of activity going on. Uh, the Harbor Master and the Waterways Commission sent an uh, email to all the patrons notifying them of the process and willing to make some concessions where we could if anyone was negatively affected. So there's been a lot of uh, hand-holding for this. 
Uh, we expect that the project will be done in the next few weeks, uh, the last one being over at the Marine Park that currently has temporary power anyway. Uh, I'll also say that uh, Fire Chief Murphy has been very instrumental in helping us with a potential uh, reimbursement from FEMA for the storm damage that's been done here. <clears throat> so there's a, a lot of moving parts uh, to the project. So as a non-boater, explain <laughs> to me what a pedestal is real quick. Is that part of the actual dock or those the... Yeah, it's a stanchion that goes on the dock. It's about four feet high. It allows the boaters to uh, connect electricity to their boat. It allows them to have water. It also provides lighting for nighttime use. Uh, so there's some real benefits to these uh, pedestals. This particular one that we're using is made from stainless steel to minimize corrosive damage. So it doesn't actually go and support the dock in the water. It's no. just it's uh, it's just a utility correct. Pole on the dock. Okay, correct. All right, so that's the, okay. Any uh, questions for the board? So the docks aren't coming out of the water again? Uh, no, they're not. They're, we've, we've Did fitted. they come out this past year? Only parts of them yeah. uh, came out. But our intent is with the de-icers not to take them out of the water, and we won't have to disconnect and reconnect these pedestals every year, which uh, really creates havoc with them. Yeah, good. How many, how many when do you think it'll be completed? I would say uh, by the end of this week, I think most of Cold Parkway will be complete, <coughs> and then they'll be working over at uh, Citra Marine Park. Okay. We actually, actually had a concern uh, that the manufacturer was not going to be able to provide these in time, so I believe we sent out a notice to the boaters that that might have occurred, but I think as Howie said, Cold Parkway should be done this week. Uh, and the Maritime Center is on the older ones, but those will be replaced over time. So there shouldn't be a whole lot of disruption to the boat as for this project at this point. Partly because of Howie, Harbor Master, and some other folks that kind of pushed this along because it probably wouldn't have happened this quick. So yeah, thank so. you. A lot of credit has to go to Sean McCarthy. Uh, he right. was the bid on this, and he's the one who pushed the manufacturer to make sure that these were going to be supplied Great. in the time of so Great. Uh, Sean did a lot of work on that too, and I don't want to leave him out. Thank you, Sean. No, he, he did, and and the Harbor Master's done a tremendous amount of work in coordination. I mean, there's a lot of moving parts to this particular project in a short amount of time, with in trying to have the least amount of disruption. Uh, I can't say thanks enough to Fire Chief Murphy for leading the charge with FEMA, because we can get us. We're anticipating a substantial reimbursement for for the loss that we have. That's positive, and and not the least which uh, I just want to say thanks to the Waterways Commission for keeping uh, an eye on the entire project and helping it along. Um, and this is a capital plan from Waterways that may be reimbursed by FEMA. That's correct. All right. I don't think there's a vote for it. Um, Lorraine, is there any way you can send an email to the chief and to Sean and thank them for sure. their help on this? Yeah, Great. Sure. Mm -hmm. sure. <laughs> Why not? Howie, tell the waterways just to text. <laughs> okay, we got waterways coming. You what? We got waterways coming. Howie's going to tell them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you for the update, Howie. Yeah. Thanks. You're welcome. Thanks for all you do. Okay, moving right along. Eight o'clock. <laughs> Item is a discussion vote for Water Resource Commission, a proposal for multi unit building. Becky? Malama, the chair, is here okay. to discuss this again. You were here yes. a month, two month months ago, ago or something and yeah. talked about this? Yes. So I'm going to ask you to recap something because Karen wasn't here for that part of the discussion. So I, you're probably going to do that anyways. Sure. Um, and then we'll get to our discussion. Okay. Um, do you want to bring anyone else up? Yes. Or you you want to introduce? Got everybody. You don't have to. Commission. If you could just introduce them. Sure. Deb Mooney Smith, Martha Cook, who is a um, member at large, I guess you could say. Retired. Emeritus. Jacqueline Vaughn and Kevin Finney. Thank you guys. Um, okay, so to recap. So um, when the rates were adjusted in the fall, we increased the water rates and also increased the connection fees. Uh, with the goal of bringing in um, enough money to help um, the capital infrastructure <coughs> in the water department and the water system. Um, and we looked at, at, at currently um, 
a developer, yeah, a developer of a multi-family dwelling is how it's spelled out. Um, has two options: get one meter for your entire development, and you pay X, and then um, that branches off to all of the units, and then you pay one central bill. Um, or you can have one meter for each unit and pr pay for a connection fee for each meter, and then. Um, each individual unit is built individually. Most of the developments use a master meter, which um, we've been trying to shift the model to one meter per unit no matter what, because if you have a master meter, you lose the opportunities for leak detection, you lose some opportunities for water conservation, basically um, in a shared situation, you're paying for each other's water as opposed to paying for your water use. So. With the connection fee increase, I was able to look at some of the, the, the numbers and saw that it would be looking at some of the developments that were in the hopper, you know, if they had a master meter, how much revenue would be brought into the town, and it was about $400,000 for a year. And then if they each were required to have a single meter per unit, it was like $6 million or something like that. So if we really want to get some adequate funding to help build a new treatment plant, things of that nature. Um, my recommendation was to implement a one meter per unit policy. Um, also have the, the benefits of water conservation and leak detection. So, and I think also an equity of payment that you're paying for your water use and not for everybody in the facilities. So when we presented that in early April, the concern from town council was that we couldn't actually require landlords to charge tenants for their water use. At the state level, you're allowed to do that, but there's no requirement for it. So she was concerned that if we required it, it would be uh, stricter than the state's regulation and therefore could be open for litigation. So what we all kind of came up with as a solution was to allow two different options for rental properties. Um, one being installing one meter for each unit in the building um, where each occupant pays for his or her water usage um, and pays directly to the water department. And then the other being that we still would allow for a master meter, which allows for ease of um, billing, basically, with the water department. Um, but you would have to pay those connection fees for each unit for the new developments so that you would have that revenue piece. So that's what this proposal uh, represents. Um, it's just kind of the fleshing out of that idea. I've worked very closely with town council on a lot of the language and on the, the she feels that this um, alleviates her concerns about that requirement for landlords charging tenants. She does have a con concern, which a number of towns have mentioned, we spoke to a number of other towns, um, that administratively it could get kind of dicey if you've got a new 200 unit development that comes in, all of a sudden the water department now has 200 new bills that they have to process and follow up on and manage versus if it was a master meter, it's just one bill or maybe five or 10 bills. Um, I continue to ask Sean Anderson, the water superintendent and his staff, and share these concerns with them. And they every time very succinctly say, nope, we can handle it. We can absolutely handle it. They very much are in favor of the one meter per unit policy. Um, and the, the other concern the town council had was just the fact that there is the kind of this option that kind of treats rental properties different than any other property. Um, but she sees that it does address the, 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 the bigger concern, which is that we can't require a landlord to charge a tenant. So I just wanted to share her concerns there. So just a, a quick overview. <laughs> We're the Water and Sewer Commissioners, so we set all the policy and, and rates for the town. They're our advisory committee, and they've come and spoken about this. Um, one other concern that popped up was 40 Bs, whether mm -hmm. this would be um, it, um, administrable against a 40 B. I think there was a lot of discussion from Jim that thought that a 40 B would not right. have to adhere to this. Um, there's not a ton of 40 Bs in town, and hopefully, at some point, we'll hit that that threshold so they won't have any more. Right. Um, but one thing that you brought up, and I think your commission obviously is into water resources and, and, and really um, trying to limit the use and have, have good use of the water is the fact that when you have individual billing, you allow the individual to maintain their own water supply so that they, if they really want to keep their bill low and conserve water, that they actually have the ability to do that. Um, and that, that attracted me that it's, this is my water bill and I have control over it as opposed to having to pay for one-tenth of whatever my neighbor uses. Um, so that was an interesting thought that I hadn't thought of before. Um, so let me open up to the board for discussion, and then we'll go from there. Sure. Okay. I wasn't here for the meeting, but I watched. Um, I watched it on tape. 
Um, I also did some research last night with regards to Cohasset and Norwell. Um, and I'm curious why, I, I personally think $14,000 per connection for a multi-unit is really excessive, but I agree with metering them individually and holding them accountable because it'll help with conservation and make people more aware. So in some other towns, what I have seen, and I'm curious, as you did your research, why you didn't go down this route, is that there are different connection fees um, associated with the different size pipe. And mm -hmm. if I'm reading all their, their policies properly, I'm not a water person. Um, but for me, that would make more sense um, to increase the connection fees to the size of the connection mm -hmm. and also do the individual meters. Because I think, um, I don't know how they would pass on that $14,000 per unit. And, you know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to run down to the rental fee, right, eventually. Right. Right. Um, so that's one concern that I have with regards to that. And secondly, the way this is written, mm -hmm. it's just, uh, it says rental property. What about multi-units that are condos and owned? So I, I didn't see that so addressed does, here it, either. Then they would, that, that first piece would apply to any, the initial language from April <coughs> is an owner-occupied building. Um, so that would fall under that first piece. That the the um, okay. concern about um, landlords um, charging tenants directly for water is strictly in a, a rental situation, not in an ownership situation. Not an owner? Okay. Um, so I guess in my first question, yeah, did you look at the the multi-size connection pipe variable that's rates? That's how we currently do it as a town. So um, you pay more based on the size of your, your, the pipe. It's pretty insignificant with the increases. Um, I mean, to be quite honest, I, I didn't really look at, because the 14000 connection, $14,000 connection fee had just been voted on in November. Mm -hmm. I was really just trying to make sense of that number. Um, so no, I didn't really look at adjusting <coughs> the number. I did speak with town council a little bit about it, and my point to her was that if we were to just adjust the connection fee and still allow master meters in order to get an increase in revenue, it doesn't take care of what we consider the, the bigger issues, which are water conservation leak mm -hmm. detection. So the goal here is really getting the one meter per unit. Um, and I, my assumption was just that the 14,000 was what I had to work with because that was what was voted on in the fall. But that's not how we do it today, right? Yeah. Yep. We voted that that's increase. How you voted that in no, I know it's 14,000 per connection, but do we apply that to a developer today? Yeah. Sure. Yes. As of September, October, November, whenever that was. So, so. But if, I think Moore's question is if they have, if they want one meter yes. on a multi-unit yes. property it's, they would be charged for six units no they would be charged depending on how many meters they implement so they can still have a master meter currently right so, so right now fourteen thousand dollars plus master. the size of the pipe right, right. so right. it's like i think it's a 100 to maybe 800 dollars difference for the larger pipes kevin do you know yeah so it would be uh to your point if someone's having 10 units Mm -hmm. It's going to be $140,000 instead of a $14,000 bill. Right. But I mean, their impact on the water system, right? Whether either you're living in a condo or not, you know, as a, as a, if I'm going to build my own home, a single family home, I'd have to pay the $14,000. And if my neighbor was going to build their home, they have to pay the $14,000. So just because I feel that there's an equity piece there that everybody with a new building or new development should have to pay for that connection fee. Well, it is a lot. I think in the grand scheme of passing the, the fee on, um, that it would be doable. Um, but I haven't heard any feedback. I had, had asked if they've been getting some pushback on the increase in the connection fee. But is it 14000 per unit? Yes. yes. And it's a one-time <laughs> fee. Not now. So if you're occupying a one-bedroom, no. You've, no, you've got a one the bedroom. Builder. You would, so the, the property owner at the time would build it. The builder would pay it. Yes, the builder would pay it. And potentially pass Ultimately. it on in the yeah. room. Yeah. I would yeah. imagine. Yeah. And then the tenant still has to pay the water bill now. Yes, yes, exactly. Which most tenants are not used to paying water bills, in my experience. Right, right. But it, it kind of is just a time... No, I, I understand why you're considering it. Right. I'm just saying that yeah, most tenants... Part of their rent. So their rent, in theory, would be lower in this situation, and you would pay. Or, or not, because of the way or the not. fee. Or yeah. <laughs> not. But I feel like $14,000 would filter down relatively quickly. But I, I don't know the, 
And I will say that most towns, there's only one other town in Massachusetts that we've been able to find that requires this, the town of Groton. While Cohasset does require it on paper, they actually use this, they do exactly what I've outlined here with their larger rental properties, like with Avalon, that's what they've done, This they've allowed for the, for the master meter in those circumstances. Um, but most of the towns, 14,000 is, is a high connection fee. So most of the town, like Groton, I think is $4,000. Cohasset is similar, so. 4,000? Oh, yeah. That? Karen, are you good? Yeah. I have, I have a bunch of questions. Okay. <laughs> um, I know how much work has gone into this, and I really appreciate the work of the whole commission on this. Um, one of the questions I had was the other communities question. So if we do, so we have one of the highest connection rates now, and only one other community in Massachusetts does this mm -hmm. per unit. Mm -hmm. So we will put ourselves at the very top of new development costs for water. So the, you said the water department was fine with the mechanics and all of this. Have, um, have we had I wouldn't actually say that though, not, not to interrupt you, I'm sorry. I don't yeah. think that there's one piece of new cost for water. So there might be other fees that other towns are charging in other okay. arenas around okay. it. Okay, so it, it is as proposed right now um, which is, you know, we may want to do for other reasons too, um, you know, because we need to, to think about our plans. So that brings me to um, the input of planning and development people in this building. Um, I think that we need to tap into their, I don't know if you've already had a chance to talk with them. Mm -mm. Um, I think that's a really critical point because they have a different lens on this, on how this will impact either proposed developments or just the practicality of you know, forget the conservation piece of it, but the development piece and the application as a, as a business, as an economic development impact. So I would like to see, take the plan now that, you know, it's all fleshed out mm -hmm. and have that conversation with um, the planning, um, director of planning and development and, um, you know, perhaps some of the, the planning folks or the EDC folks. So I did, I did, uh, I have, uh, Brad Washburn reached out to me the other day. Oh, I good. sent him okay. the, an outline of the proposal, asked him to call with any additional questions or thoughts and haven't heard anything, but I'm, I'm happy to have a separate meeting with him. But I, I think that's a really critical piece. Yeah. And then the other <laughs> concern that, and I've been involved in a lot of these conversations, I think the work's been, you know, great, head in the right direction. One thing I hadn't really thought about until, you know, now is, you know, anything like a deadline to make you think about stuff, right, um, is, and this is the same sort of thing, applying the different lens, is the impact on our affordable housing goals. Um, you've listed the Lawson Green on here, um, but that is certainly, we don't want it, to, it's not good for our master plan that we're developing, but our master plans to discourage appropriate affordable housing or to make it not, um, you know, price them out of it basically. So I'm a little concerned about, um, you know, if we all of a sudden say, okay, here, you know, housing authority, we want to do this and you're going to have to spend another million dollars on it. Is that even going to, are we going to price them out of providing more homes? Okay. So, so, so I can reach out to them as well. Okay. Yeah. Sounds. <laughs> Your emeritus has a. <laughs> yeah, I just want to make a comment about that. Martha, just Hi, Martha. Um, from an affordable housing point of view, if I were to move into a situation like that, it would be more fair for me in the long run to pay for my own personal water usage at the individual rate as opposed to paying my portion of the water usage of the entire development at the higher rate for a more aggregate. Because as you know, we go up by usage. And so if I'm in a 20 unit development, I'm going to pay at the higher 20 rate, whereas if I am individual in a 40B, I want to pay my own water usage, not everybody else. Yeah, I totally get that piece. It's the so connection. The it's the connection fees. And right. so if somebody's building <coughs> a 20 unit right. and we're going to charge them 20 times 14 to build the building. Right. So up front, that's the developer. In yeah. the long run, it's the actual tenant. Yeah. So, so that's the piece that I just, I'm a little concerned that maybe, you know, just like Ms. Curran said about, you know, if we look at some other examples of, you know, we've got a huge pipe and, you know, different pricing models that we might want to layer in. I, d I just personally don't think it's a good idea to discourage affordable housing, appropriate affordable housing. Right. And I say that very, A, capital A, appropriate. 
because uh, we need it. Yeah, I hear that. And in terms of the the tiered rate, I think we would need to just scrap this. We'd have to do a whole other rate study. Um, well, I, I think I imagine because that decision was made by the board to increase the connection fee to decrease the. Mm -hmm. um, the, the it, to decrease the proposed increase for rates across the board mm -hmm. so I think we'd have to go back or maybe Nancy and I could look at what because the rate study did not cover this I spoke with right them about right. This. Well, I think what we should do is is have you know Kevin and Sean come back because you guys proposed the rate of fourteen thousand dollars and I it made a lot of sense then and I don't know in the context of this as it does or that I just don't know why we went up that high um, but the one the one thing to to um, Martha's point was it's really just timing of the payment, right? Because at the lowest water rate we're under two dollars a hundred cubic feet, and when you get up to the next levels you're at like seven or eight dollars. Yeah. So the one meter is going to pay it over time, mm -hmm. whereas the individual meters are going to pay it up front, and it's going to be paid by the developer. And clearly the town has the need for money to but, put in yeah. the infrastructure, and I think we thought that the if I remember correctly, that the developer should participate more than the than the the actual renter initially, because we need the, the money up front. Right, but maybe we need to do a combination. If we're going to go to individual, maybe we need to revisit the, the connection. Yeah. And did we say that the forty Bs probably won't have to pay this? Yeah. What was that's what Jim's thought was. Yeah, so Jim's if that's the that. case, then it's it falls more on any development that's not. If, if you're building. Uh, 40B apartment complex. That's yeah. going to be a large project in the 200 unit range. Right, right which we have one. So 200 units times $14,000, they're going to go immediately to the state and say, that requirement makes it unaffordable. We can't do affordable housing with that requirement. Whether the state buys it or not, I'm going to tell you the Housing Appeals Committee will buy it because they'll buy anything. Um, they just say, no, it's affordable housing. You can, you can do whatever you want. Um, but to Karen's point, uh, Karen Canfield's point, uh, this is a policy. So if someone came in with a proposal to do actual, real, affordable housing, then the board sitting as water commissioners could adjust make an adjustment to what they were paying in the interest of providing affordable housing. But on a 40B, Sean, if I told you you were going to pay me $14,000 for 200 units, you shouldn't yourself write to the state and say, unaffordable, it makes it non-economic, we can't build. And right. I'm fairly certain the Housing Appeals Committee will say, yes, that's not affordable, un uneconomic, and, and they throw it out. And you were talking about different size piping. I just, this, Kevin, this five-eighths, this three-quarter, one, there's not a lot of different size. The other towns go all the way up to like six inch. So they have some big. It's $4,526, yeah. Nancy, just a quick map, which is amazing. And <laughs> five eighths is two hundred ninety six dollars. The three quarters is three sixty four. But how many? How many do you? But that's do on we top see? of the fourteen thousand. That's the base charge annually. Annually. A quarter of that each. Three hundred dollars. Yeah, but if you look, you know what I would love to do is is take a look at this collectively, like you said, um, because I think. There are a lot of moving parts that we're really not all considering right now. I to I'm very much in favor of putting individual meters. I think that's your ultimate goal. Mm -hmm. What what I would like to do is look at it all together with with Sean and well, and Kevin yeah. and Nancy and take a look at what other towns do because there are some pretty significant connection fees for those larger pipes. They're like a hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars, and then they're individual or or um, mm -hmm. whatever you call it, mass metering. Is that what you call it? The second one. So you're saying having a master meter but requiring that there are some meters beyond those master meters so basically the town that master meter that that larger pipe would be managed by the town and then they would sub meter the, the units because the mass the larger meter no that's the larger pipe it's the pipe the not the meter right I believe that so they're tied, like has, they're tied. Has a 12 -inch pipe and they right $100, right we don't have any developments, and I don't think Cohasset does really, where they have a 12 inch pipe going into the. I, I mean, they just. Maybe Avalon. I mean, that's our main that's carrying crazy. line. That's 12 inch walk, 12, like Hadley, Hadley Road. One of our big carrying lines is only a 12 inch pipe. So we don't have any subdivisions where we'd put a 12 inch pipe, it'd be coming off an 8 inch, <coughs> and we wouldn't be able to supply the water for that. Okay. So if that makes sense. So yeah. most of the connections that we have are 
much smaller and, and it might be like a four inch connection or, or even a six inch connection and it won't for the fire. Um, there might be a fire connection or something to that effect. Kevin, do you recall the rationale for the 14,000? I kind of do. <laughs> and um, I'll, I'll check with Nancy too. I'll pick her brain on it. I thought we gave the board three options on how we could do it. And we, we were suggesting a higher rate. And I thought the board was suggesting high, maybe not the board, maybe we were looking at doing higher um, new tie in fees in, in a lesser rate in order to get where we needed to to balance the budget. I think that and it was actually brought up at that meeting when that was decided, thinking, okay, putting some burden isn't the right word, but having some of the newer developments pay for the work that needs to be done on the infrastructure. And the comment was actually made at that meeting, should we revisit the fact that we allow a master meter? And then the comment was made, we'll run the numbers. And then when I ran the run numbers, it was su such a big difference that if we were increasing the connection fees to help pay for future work that needed to happen, um, we wouldn't get that money if we still allowed the master meters, basically. Mm -hmm. So that's where this all started. Mm -hmm. right. well, one second, man. <laughs> Nancy, can you, I'm sure there's paperwork that we got at that meeting. Is there any way you can pull that together and, and kind of throw the proposal of going to um, individual meeting, metering into it and see if that number You want me to write numbers? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you sweet touch. Make so You're making us so happy. <laughs> so in terms of how that would then fit with the goals, basically? I, I think uh, from what I'm hearing, it sounds like we like the the Idea. policy of the individual metering, right. but we need to see if it coincides with the in rate increase that we did for the metering, right. uh, for the hookup. So I think right. that we've got to come to grips that we're not overcharging people that's going to, you know, make it unaffordable, make people not want to develop here, and the whole, the whole plan again. Okay. Um, I'm going to go to the woman in the white first. It seems that everybody's kind of hung up on the 40B, or as one of the things as 14,000 is being, making it, you know, the cost of, what if it's just a percentage of that development? If they're saying there's going to be five 40B units, then, then those are the five that maybe you need to use cost to, but everybody else in this town is going to pay 14,000 to hook up to water. So why do the, does the whole development get the benefit of just because there's a couple of units and then there's a 40B. Yeah, I think, um, I don't know that we're hung up on the 40B because I think we all agree that we have no control over 40B. Yeah. So, um, so I think we have to look outside of it like you're suggesting, saying, look, this is for the regular development that goes on in town. If this one big 40B goes into place, it may be the last 40B that goes into place too. So, um, so I think it's, that's short-lived. Um, but I think- That doesn't apply for a unit. That applies to the whole development than anything. Really, it would be up to the to the housing authority to decide what what they would charge them. I think, right, Jim? I mean, they yeah. would, they would deem it unaffordable, and we wouldn't get paid. Ma'am. Yes, Aaron Wolfman. Um, this whole discussion is taking um, to me seems like that there's an infinite amount of sewer um, and wastewater um, capacity as well as water in this town, which we know there is not. So I'd like to know where is the town right now on sewer capacity? Um, where are we right now? At this very second, with all the rain, we're at somewhere around 98%. With all, the, with right all the developments that are in, in queue. Correct. Yeah. We're at 98% right now. With all the water that we've had over the last... No, I'm, I'm talking about how many people can hook up the sewer right now. Um, only the projects that we have in place and maybe a few other little ones. Is there more for Not yet. No. We'll, that. Could we'll be. discuss it in the future. There used to be a moratorium. What, what, um, where did the, the, um, the excess come in? We there was never a moratorium since I've been here. It was. You uh, were way back in the 90 something. Actually, when they, um, yeah. in the early 2000s, when they expanded the system, there was a moratorium. 1996, we spent 15 million dollars on right, the treatment it was plan. At that yeah. Time. Yeah. Well, no, but we no, we increased it to lift the moratorium because DEP right. said. Right. But when they went to open it, they realized again it was undersized. So my question is, um, how many more people can hook up to town sewer? Uh, rough estimate. How many more households? Um, very few until we get I and I done and until we see what it, it, it's kind of unfair to look at it right now because the water uh, it's rained so much lately that we're processing a heck of a lot more water in the in the time period that we're looking at right now 
Um, but it is still very, very high, and it's obviously an issue that the board's got to discuss. Um, so your, your, your big picture is very correct. Kevin, do you have anything out of that? Or? OK. Yes, ma'am. My math isn't that quick. I can't read that. So there are going to be a ton of um, uh, new projects being approved in situ. We yeah, want to tie into the system. Um, the project, so is that correct? We're going to be discussing that in the upcoming weeks, but we are we are close to a level of it's it's high on the priority list of us to figure out. Hi, from Jack Lindo, my mother, and I think the, our main, you know, just kind of at the top of our head was all of the development on Halberd with the control predators, and um, you know all this extra flex. And uh, to make sure that each, there's like four units together on the townhouse, each person would be responsible for a number. And I think there was some confusion that that wasn't going to happen. Well, Toll Brothers is done, and we've already worked out them there. I don't know if they're doing individual meeting, but I know that they paid for all of the hookups. Okay, so that's already done. That's yeah. already done. Yeah. That's, yeah. yeah. And we're, we're trying to set policy for the future. You know, it's, right. um, that's all. May I ask, what, what did they pay for hookups? I, I can't tell you off the top of my head. I think it was uh, abated a little bit, but a fair amount per unit. Millions. A uh, million four or something? What did it come down <coughs> to individual unit? I'd be guessing. I can't remember off the top of my head. Are we talking about their water hookups or sewer? Yeah. Oh, sorry. I don't know. What was the water bucket? They would have come in under our previous rates. Forty-five hundred per year. Mm -hmm. They were not. Uh, that's cheap. Uh, four years ago, I paid sixty-five hundred dollars for one year, and fifteen thousand to hook up the sewer. It, it was. It, 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 no, no, the, the price didn't go down. I don't, I don't remember the rates yeah. ever. Going whatever, down. whatever the rate was. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Any other uh, comments or questions from the board? I, I, from what I'm hearing. We're not going to vote on this tonight. It doesn't seem And it, it seems like conceptually we like the idea and the direction it's moving in. It seems like financially we need to look at the modeling and see if, if it's not really going hand in hand with the rate increases that we just proved um, a few months ago. Mm -hmm. Right. And I guess just my only response to that was that I provided a bunch of numbers back in April. Mm -hmm. um, that showed that if the goal, and again, I, I don't know how it will work into the model, but Nancy looked at, at the numbers that I provided as did Kevin at the time, um, and it just showed that you're only going to get 300 fr from those four, from some of the bigger developments, you're only going to get $400,000 per year in revenue. Mm -hmm. So if your goal, I think, was millions of dollars in projects that the water department needed to complete right. that they were trying to cover with the increased rate. So, um, you know, I could show that again and see how it all, all fits together. Um, so maybe what we'll do is why don't we set up a meeting not outside of here. We'll pick two board members uh, to meet with you and Nancy and maybe Sean or Kevin, whoever wants to, and kind of go through the whole conceptual thing and then, then they can update the board on it so we don't have to start at, at page zero here and then we'll come back and discuss it in a future meeting. That, that sounds nice. good to everybody? I'd like to include Brad in that conversation. Yeah, yeah and I'll have a separate meeting with Brad yeah. as well. Well, yeah, but if we have a sort of... Think okay. tank on it. I think he's a very important. So why don't we put closure to this? Who wants to do that? So I can pass that on to somebody else. Who wants to? Karen. Uh, well, I've been involved in the conversation. I'm happy okay. to continue. Right, so why don't the two the Karens, Karens <laughs> get together and set up the meeting? It's going to get confusing. Great. <laughs> All right. Thank you guys for coming in. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Okay. <laughs> Moving on to the next topic, um, it's a discussion of vote for a sewer tie-in. <laughs> Speaking of. And this is uh, for Bittersweet Lane and Long Meadow Road, Leo Costello and Paul Maravito. I didn't want to copy the map that um, Paul Maravito's office dropped off here. Yeah. Um, that one there. I just thought it would be easier looking at it on the screen. Perfect. And I assume everyone saw in the in the pamphlet or the packet that we got the information from um, the sewer department on the. Mm -hmm. I asked him to um, just run the current numbers so that we knew 
exactly what we were dealing with with all the projects you see right now. Is there a version? Just your name. Yes, my name is Adam Wade, 36 Dan Bond. Is there a version of the exhibit that the audience can see? Um, which exhibit? The map? The map? Yeah. One of mine. Take mine. Yeah. No, it's mine. All right. All right. Yeah. And we'll hold it up so they can go on the camera. Let me check for questions. Yeah, okay. I don't have any long time. Adam Karen, you and I can share. So, so before I turn it over, uh, let me give a, a quick summary of where we are on on the whole topic. Um, so, we had a meeting last week. Uh, our last meeting, actually we've had meetings for the, couple, the past couple of months where the um, Wastewater Treatment Enterprise Fund is um, um, financially challenged, we'll say, and we need to generate revenue to, um, to do pay for the infrastructure and to pay for the operations of the, of the Enterprise Fund. Um, and part of our plan is for new development um, and the hookup fees to participate in that. And also part of the plan is to let other people hook up to the infrastructure that already exists because there's no additional expense for that, but you get the revenue of the hookups. And that's got to be part of our ongoing plan, our annual plan, that there's different components of it that allow the, the enterprise fund to be a break-even operation so that we don't have to keep raising the rates every year. Um, that being said, we had probably our first meeting, last meeting, where we talked about two different developments, or not two different developments, um, yeah. one single home homeowner and then one um, project that had been essentially given a hookup back in the 90s um, when it became available to them and they came before us for a hookup too and we granted the one hookup and then 10 hookups on, I can't remember the name of the street. Persimmon, Persimmon and Hickory. Right, and Hickory. And that, we said at that meeting that that's gonna prompt other people to come before us and look for <laughs> hookups as well. And here they are. Leo's been before us before, a year ago maybe, to talk about his project and um, and we expect to see others coming in. Since that time, we've gotten some additional numbers from Will um, Branton, um, which have all the other projects that are already in queue that already have permits to build and what that has done to our capacity. So that's the additional information that we have here. Mm -hmm. So we really have some tough decisions moving forward on two fronts. One to keep the enterprise fund financially secure, and two, being attentive to our, our sewer capacity and not getting into a position where we're overextended it. So, um, so that's what we have to talk about, and that's, this is, that's gonna be a much bigger discussion than tonight, but Leo's before us to talk about the hookups that he's talking about, and we'll discuss them individually and see where they fall. That being said, anyone want to say anything before I turn it over to Paul? Was that a fairly good summary of? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I just might add that <coughs> Leo's been before, like you mm -hmm. said, he's been before us in different reasons. Well, m most of the time it was a capacity issue. Let's see what happens with North Situate. So he's been before us half a dozen times. If not, he'd get ready to come and then not come because Kevin would tell him, well, we're waiting to see what's going on with North Situate with the regional project. So he's been back and forth, and, and then we saw the other group come in, fine, T tie them in. I voted for it, mm -hmm. but, you know, right. this, this is like 50, 70-year-old development yeah. that and I think we all agree we'd like to see those people that have been in town for years and years. Then if we have to get, then if we're near our capacity, it's, it's just like all the new ones seem to, to jump in. And that's mm -hmm. just, so. So... Well, I'm going to let them talk before you, unless I misspoke. Okay. All right. So, um, so Paul or Leah, whoever wants to, to pitch um, what you're asking for here, and then we'll get Will involved in the board. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, the, the sketch that I, I prepared for the members, it shows a total of 14 homes that would be tied into the sewer. Um, Leo is proposing to... Um, uh, connect to the existing force main and Anvinal Road 
and run it down the full length of a bittersweet drive which would serve as 10 homes and extend it onto his property which is off along Meadow Road. There, there'd be four uh, dwellings on his property which would uh, be, be tied in. Um, Leo would, on bittersweet drive, he would bring these um, sewer stubs to the property line to make it easy for the homeowners to tie into their home by working on their uh, lots only without having to go into the street. He would um, repave the street as necessary. Um, and number nine, uh, Long Meadow, which is a house that's under construction, would be tied in probably sooner than later. Um, by, by, by doing this, the town would have an infrastructure installed for 14 homes that would ultimately be on the sewer. Um, there'd be no cost to the town, and the revenue that you get would be um, from the sewer connection fees. Um, and there, again, there'd be no cost to the town. Um, we uh, do have a letter that I'll present to you from one of the abutters, uh, Maureen Hurley, who's in support of it. Uh, Bittersweet Drive was built in the 50s and 60s. The, those systems are old. The soils aren't that great out there. So anyone selling their home is probably going to be looking at having to put in a very expensive septic system. Um, it, it would be beneficial if, if the sewer was in and they could um, accommodate the house in that matter. So I think with that I'll end and, and answer any questions you may have. Is there any is there any reason outside of it would be better, it would be nice to have a sewer in this neighborhood that they should get it? Is there any parking well, issue? Is there, any, is there anything other than? Yes. We, we did the subdivision on the other side of Ann Vinyl Road. And this is in the watershed to the Dolan well fields, which I believe the town is testing. Uh, the town purchased those well fields back in the 80s, I believe. And I think they're looking to bring those online. When, when we did the Curtis Farm subdivision last year, um, it was suggested that we look at tying that into the, into the sewer because of the Dolan well fields, which were about 1,300 feet downhill. From an environmental point of view, this would be a, I believe this would be a, a benefit to the groundwater supplies that would uh, perhaps um, feed those well fields. Um, the other reason is that you wouldn't have these unsightly mounds. The uh, groundwaters are very high out here, and there, there'd be some pretty high mounds in those streets. We have done septic systems in this area as repairs, and they all ended up with mounds. Um, so it okay. goes down to the squash decline, too, which the state man needed yeah. to they clean up, too. Right? Yeah. Can you just speak up, because the people okay. in the back oh, can't hear. Go ahead, oh, Liam. I was just saying that, that I, I believe that that flows down to Musquashka Pond also, um, which I believe was part of the reason the state had them come in and connect down there to, to keep that Musquashka Pond. I'll get you in one, one second. Um, all right, uh, let me open up to the board. Um, who wants to, anyone want to start the discussions? I will. Um, I just would like to know from a general standpoint how many of neighborhoods that have sewer running by them could use the same logic. We're at capacity close to it and I understand why everyone wants sewer and I appreciate that. If we didn't have a capacity problem I'd be saying let's hook everyone up that we can. But you know because there's a connection running down Ann Vinyl how many other um, you know, neighborhoods would have a similar uh, case to make all over town. So that's my only concern. And I'm, I'm new to this, so. I mean, at this point in time, uh, Leo's plan would be to, to install the entire infrastructure. He's already had RF Mahoney do a design on that, and it does work. And what he would do um, immediately is to tie one, one uh, house in on his property. We don't know how many would I'll be tying in on Bittersweet Drive, but again, it will be subject to the capacity. The point is that the infrastructure would be in place when the capacity is available. If people wanted to tie in, they could do it at no expense to the town. So, time. in other words, you're not asking to tie in, you're just asking to put the infrastructure in? We're, 
as of today, we're asking to put the infrastructure in right. and tie in number nine Long Meadow, which is a new home under construction on Leo's property. So you're proposing to put infrastructure in through a whole neighborhood, but only tie in one house? One house at this time. At this time. And break up the cold sack. Ma'am. Yes, is that house on construction? Actually, I'll get I'll get to all you guys. You'll be able to talk shortly. <laughs> um, is that? Oh yeah. Anyone else? I'll go later. I'm gonna go. You wanna go? You go. Okay. Um, just I just because I don't remember. On the other side of Hatherley, there's a the new development as well. The school. And Curtis, yeah. Curtis, Curtis, the Curtis development yes, is right. that? Did that get sewered, or they had that? No, that's they had to build that joint project. That's, that that's on a shared system. The shared system. That's one right. big leaching area for all the homes. So they're actually in the same situation on that side, where it's it's running on the road. So if, if Leo's property were on end vinyl, he'd hook up no problem. Um, and if we add this whole line to number nine. Anyone along that line would have would then have frontage, and that would make them el eligible. You couldn't not let them hook up because that's the policy. If it runs in front of your house, you can hook up, right? Um, well, we're the well, we're the commissioner, so we could not. We couldn't tell anybody on Ann Vinyl they couldn't hook up if they weren't. If somebody technically there are stubs along that whole line right. from the school up, and. If somebody were on septic and hadn't hooked up yet, well, uh, they would have by right as long as there wasn't a moratorium. Am I, is that that's correct? That's correct. Yeah. Right. Um, okay. It's, sorry. There's a stub at the end of Bittersweet Lane, correct? Yes. On Ann Vinyl. Yes, there's um, two homes on the corner of Bittersweet and Ann Vinyl. The assessor's map, if, if you look at the if you're looking down Bittersweet Drive from Ann Vinyl, that house on the left there, that's actually been divided. There's a second house there, and those two houses are tied into that sewer. Okay. See number 20, sorry, number 42, Bitters, no, 42 Ann Vinyl Road, and there's a new house behind it that was tied in as well. And it ran behind it's the behind. backyard or something like yes. that to get to... All right. Who's hooked up? Is that one? No, the uh, furnace was... Right there. That this one's one? hooked up. And it, it went... This one's hooked up already? I believe so. That's my house. It has furniture. And who's number three? Is that Paul. Leo, do you own that as well? Paul. He is. Which, which one's hooked up? This one on the left of the street? This one or this one? No, the first one you showed. This one? Yeah, and you see the lot's 46,000 square feet? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. That, that lot was actually uh, subdivided, and they created another lot behind it off of Bittersweet Drive, and that house is tied There's in. There's a house well. behind this one? Yes. And they're both hooked up? Yes. Yeah. You're the one behind it? Okay. On Bittersweet. But it has frontage on Vinyl. The first one does. Both of them. Oh, they both have Vinyl Oh, because the well, lot... Well, when were they subdivided? It's a... To land. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Is there a stub in the middle of Bittersweet? Yes. That's why we did it. Yes. To tie in all the houses from the school to the four-way intersection. And the line's designed to handle every house along the way. Not new houses, but every existing house at that time. Where? Oh, this way? Or this the Ann Vinyl Road. Vinyl from Vinyl the school Vinyl. up to the four-way, yeah. every house along the way. Sean, you're right. When we did the design for the Heatherly School to tie it in, yep. we were asked by the town administrator to provide stubs along that line for the individual homes as well as Bittersweet Drive. Because the board and told the gag was There's to a do separate that. force main that came into Bittersweet Drive off of Anna Vinyl Road. Thank you. The yep. intent was to do what we're looking at now. Right. When Heatherly School was tied in, <coughs> there's a a line, whether it's forced or gravity, from the school up to the four-way intersection. Four-way intersection. Uh, uh, Captain pa Captain P.S. Tilden, the four-way stub. Right. So the board instructed Rick Agnew to put stubs for every house between the school and the four-way intersection. 
That's correct. That's correct. Thank you. Yes. Sean, are there any in bittersweet? Stubbs. There's one right in the middle, and that was that's what I just asked Paul. One in the middle to handle that. Right. Straight. But there's one in the not on bittersweet, but on Ann vinyl. Paul said there is. That's what I'm saying. Bittersweet. It's on Ann vinyl, pointing towards bittersweet. Yes. It, yeah. it does go down bittersweet, a short distance. Okay. Oh. And that was our intention at that time. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Why? Why put the line yeah. in and not put the stubs in? Look, I, th I think. I think that the elephant in the room is the capacity. It's not the fact whether the, the development, you know, could use a hookup and that it would be a, a good deal for the town to get all the infrastructure done for one house in the back. The, the problem is the, the capacity of the system right now. Um, but I also would like clarity. It, it was my first understanding that all these homes were going to come on, and right. now we're hearing one. Well, Karen's point was, if you put the if you put the line in there, then they now have to automatically write. can right. Well, I don't know, but it doesn't say they're then? going to. That is. But they can. Right so if we house, put an extension have. off a one off a, a main, then people have the right to, to hook up. Typically, yes. We have we have two scenarios. So um, we've got some scenarios in town where there is a force main that goes down the road, but there are no stubs to the houses. That's we classify that as not necessarily a right to tie in because you couldn't tie into a force main like that as, as well but if there are is a force main with stubs and everything else broken in um right. I the sean did you have anything else and this would be a force main obviously it wouldn't be gravity any one system it'd be pump system the whole way right. yeah. i believe and that's leo is that what you yes you would have yeah. that land pump systems yes yeah. Want me to come back to you? Yeah, no, I'm all set for right now. Thank you. Uh, I'm good. I'd like to hear um, from other Will? folks that want to speak. Okay. I'm good with Will. So, okay. before we get to you, Will, can you just give us an overview of your memo here about um, the capacity of the system and what impact this will have in, okay. in your opinion and all that? Yeah. Uh, takeaways are is that we're currently at 93.9 percent .9 of our capacity of the wastewater plant um, factoring in all the developers and previously approved projects those that have permits or been otherwise approved by planning board uh, factoring that it will be down to 98.8 percent of our capacity uh, meaning there's less than two percent remaining after community capacity is taken into effect um, the other thing I wanted to note was that because a lot of our flow is from I&I, &I, um, we're, we're very much at the limbs of Mother Nature, and our capacity numbers month to month can change as much as um, you know, nearly 8%. So that's very concerning to me, where month to month I'm kind of biting my nails until those numbers come in. So what, what is the one? Okay, yeah. Well, I, I just stand for it. Thank you. Water. Sir, Water sir, sir just one second. Let, let him finish and I'll let you. <laughs> yeah. So, so we'll go ahead, continue. Uh, that, that's it for the key takeaways. I can, I can dive into it with specific breakdowns. Um, can you elaborate on what you just said? You're waiting for that to go down. Meaning that when the summer comes, what, what do you mean by that? Um, each each month I have to calculate our capacity from the previous month and factor it into our rolling average. And if we exceed that rolling average, it's um, a lot of headaches and a lot of consequences for us. Um, so pretty much since September of last year, September 2018, when the uh, rainfall in the fall was getting heavier and heavier each week and each month, uh, we started to become very concerned because uh, when we would normally hope for a little bit of a drop off in our flows, we were not receiving any drop off, and instead we were receiving some of the highest flows that we've seen to date, uh, particularly in November of 2018. Um, in the report, you'll see the, the the greatest monthly change within the previous three years. That seven point, uh, rounding 7.9 percent change from one month to another month occurred in November of uh, 2018. So again, you said you had expected it to go down. I had hoped it would go down. Um, I'm still hoping it's going to go down, but April this year was slightly higher flows than April last year. Uh, I'd like to hope that as temperatures rise, things will dry up, 
but I'm also concerned that as temperatures rise, more evaporation is going to occur, and it's becoming more difficult to predict rain patterns and uh, rain tables for us. Okay. Any questions for Will? Well, just one comment that this uh, your work is always very thorough, but the 98.8 doesn't. It it assumes everything's online, but doesn't assume we've finished some of the I and I projects. It takes into account no I and I projects. Um, that's correct. Okay, so you know we are working at the same time to make sure that that gets yeah. that number doesn't. We don't hit that number. Right. <laughs> okay. Anything else before I open it up? Okay, I'll open up to the audience. Uh, so Did you get your terms taken care of? I and I is the holes in the system so that we're trying yes, to plug. The idea is it's Maybe not actually just sewer discharge, it's just water getting into the it's pipes. Exactly. And Ocean so and groundwater getting into the holes, and we've estimated it's about a third of the stuff that we process is not sewage. Yes. Right, so if we could close that up, no problem. <laughs> Um, okay, so What's your name? my name's Adam Wade. I'm at 36 Ant Bible on the corner of Bitter Smooth. I've uh, lived in the house for about 10 years now. Um, got to the the neighborhood. And uh, I, just, I have some questions, um, just made aware of this by my neighbors. Um, and they, they really relate to uh, how this proposal fits into a plan generally for the neighborhood. Um, you know, primarily, my concern is that Bitter Smooth remains a cul de sac. Um, that this is not the thin edge of the, thin edge of the wedge that uh, is going to be the first step for further development. Um, and we're going to take this plan into that side of the way. I've got two little girls, 11 and 9, and this is their neighborhood, and they're kind of growing up the way I did. You just turn loose in the backyard, and <laughs> down, the, down the cul-de-sac they go. I'd, I'd be concerned if there was increased traffic for development um, and the cul-de-sac or to cease to be a cul-de-sac. So, uh, I, I have so a, stop right there. Yep. Connect it to what are you, what's going on? Are you putting a street? Are you extending the street no, into no, that? No. I've, okay. I've broken out the lots and I've given them to my children. Right. So. And how do they access? How do they access the? I, one minute, sir. Yep. How do they access those lots, Leo? To, um, Long Meadow Road. I put in a common driveway for two blocks, and I'm going to break another lot off the cul-de-sac to give to them. So. Each son has received uh, approximately four acres. Do you own the land on the cul-de-sac? Yes, I bought the cul-de-sac, but it is a wetland. No, wait a minute, wait a minute. Long Meadow, not, not bittersweet. No, I yeah. bought bittersweet. Oh, you do? Yes. All right, okay. I okay. thought. So this here yeah. is. Oh, yes, right. Yeah. You've got all this land back here. Right. You're going to open this up, and all of a sudden, this is going to be the That's street that goes thought. back yeah. to you. Yeah. That's all wetland in there. The other thing is that um, there was a subdivision plan where a field stone road went all the way in from Long Meadow up to the end of Bittersweet Drive. There's a series of lots in there. Leo's wiped those out and created two large lots for two reasons. Number one, there was the amount of wetland which you wouldn't be able to build on, but also the town has a drain easement for a large drain pipe that comes, that picks up the water at the end of Bittersweet Drive and actually comes across this property and ties into Fieldstone Road. Um, but again, number three and number nine are two large lots and what he did was to get rid of I think eight or nine lots that were on a plan created in the 1960s though those lots couldn't be built on today anyway because of the wetland so what he did was to get rid of those and he created lot three and nine and they're serviced by a common driveway off along Meadow Road okay so, one second. Um, I think their concerns and I was wondering what they were and oh, I, the, I can't speak I bittersweet drive would never be Extended for a couple of reasons. One, because of the grade change, and the other is because of the wetlands that are in there. All right. And if I can, I, I've talked to Leo about this for a long time, and I may be going out on a limb here, but you would never ever consider putting that a throughway. No. And I, that no. he's I got. I, I have bought it, but I don't, and you can answer this better than me. I don't think I own enough property on the cul de sac to bring a road through there. It touches it, but. It's not, it's not 60 feet clearance, wide or anything yeah. that touches it. Right. So and I think that that's it. Well, mm -hmm. that's his concern, and I didn't even think about that. I, I did never even considered all the all the time we were talking. I, you know, you've got, and, and and your children might have different ideas, but you've got, you know, beautiful parcel there. If you run something through it, it's just it's right. devalue the whole. Okay. I didn't think right. that was his intention. Okay. So oh. I have uh, printout from. 
Google Maps, which <laughs> I understand if you turn off the satellite, follows town parcel maps. Um, okay. As of who knows when they last did it, but <laughs> it looks different. It omits the Waffle House and the. Well, what's a, tell us what your point is. What, like what's what, what's so different on the map? Yeah. The, the point is that there are what appear to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight buildable lots. That yeah. Can you show? Yeah. Perhaps not, but How many copies have? I have enough for everyone. Okay. Thank you. So it's helpful when we're talking about you know, where things go, what rights people have. To kind of understand exactly where those those lots are and what the proposal would be for development, uh, so that I understand whether the deed to my house uh, is still subject to ancestors who might eventually, now that sewer is in there, want to develop the road into a throughway. And I understand there are wetlands, and perhaps some of those ten parcels may not, although they may follow the town map right now, may not actually be developable. So. It, it may not be an opportunity, but it's, it's, uh, I think these plat maps show the present subdivision. And I'm not sure what the. I think we get yeah we get your your concept that if we give them the sewer, it could open that whole thing up to much more development. Okay. Yes, sir. So my question is, with the map that you've been given, are these are these ten? Lots subdivided at this point in time. Paul, is that is this one big lot number three? Is that one big lot, or is it the eight lots that are on this Google Map? No, it's 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 one big lot. These are lots that those those lots on the map have been wiped out. We all had a survey plan done where he took those eight lots and, and he divided it into two. And what he did technically to, was to wipe out that old subdivision. When he did the perimeter plan and created two lots. The subdivision doesn't exist anymore. This this is an old plan. The assessor's maps haven't been updated yet. They're going to be doing it next year, I believe. Okay. But Leo took those eight lots and combined them into two. Okay. Did you have any other questions, sir? No, thank you. Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. What was your name, McLaugh? Uh, Matthew McLaughlin. McLaughlin. And he's at uh, Nine Bit of Sweet Drive. Nine Bit. Any questions? One second. Ma'am? So, Eileen Knight, 24 Finish Sweet Drive. Um, I just wanted on record that 30 something years ago, this gentleman sat in my uh, living room and told me one thing and then did something else. So, I am very concerned about the quality of life that we would have if, in fact, this was allowed to happen. Because if there's pipes going in, that means that he's going to build through, somehow you're going to have to get the pipes in. So somehow that passageway is going to be dug up. So all of a sudden, there's a road there. And I want to know what he, the town, can do for us, the, the people, the residents on that street, to guarantee that that's not going to happen. My other concern <laughs> is if, in fact, those lots are built, then is there a requirement for fire trucks to get to a house or a development quickly because if you're going down uh, Man Hill to Fieldstone to Long Meadow, you're losing minutes. So what is the requirement there? So I know that that's not our purview, um, <coughs> but I understand your concerns. Um, I don't know. I mean, that's more of a planning board issue in terms of, I mean, if he has a right to develop and he has access, then that's his right and it has to go through the planning process, not through the Board of Selectmen. Um, and I understand your concern is is the sewer allowing this to facilitate this. So um, I don't know the answer to your question. There, I know there's codes for fire trucks. I don't think a fire truck is going to go through a cul-de-sac through the woods to get to someplace quicker, though, no. unless there's a road. So uh, just couple other questions. So if this was allowed, would it be considered private or public, this piping? The sewer pipe? Yeah. It would be public. Public, public right? Absolutely. It would be public. Okay. So in that case, would we would the residents have the choice of 
So is it a betterment or is it a privilege? We haven't decided. I don't know yet. We'd have to vote on how how that well, would be because we just did it for for Simon when we didn't make everybody hook up. Well, we no, they're paying the fees. No, they, they have to pay the fees. Not all, not all 24 houses. Anyone that hooks up is going to be. Yeah, yeah, anyone that hooks up, up is. Yeah. But they're not paying a better but man. I think what this woman's saying is if I don't hook up, do I have to pay the better man? Yeah. Right. No. Right. But, but what we discussed on the other, and Kevin will correct me if I'm wrong, is if Mr. Costell is paying for the infrastructure, right. the town's not incurring the cost of that betterment, so he will assume that whole assume cost. The betterment, but they would still pay the privilege. You would just pay the connection fee. The hookup, right, the regular hookup fee, right. just as if it ran in front of your house. Would, would you still then have the option of doing it or not doing it, or is it, would you have to do it? I think you, it's an option. Yeah, I think it's an option. Yeah. I know it but ran in front of my house for years, and it wasn't until I bought it and moved in that it was required that I. But on your particular case, you have to pay it. Right. But the original, the guy was there before me, and he didn't hook up. Yeah. But if we have, to, to her point, if I could, yeah. if we ever did come to a capacity and then you're in failure, you, have, you don't have a choice. You have to fix your system. Mm -hmm. Right. So. That's right. Right, if you're in a moratorium, you mean? Right, yes. Yeah. Is that what I, yeah, that's what I meant to yeah. say? Um, can I ask a couple yeah. questions? Sorry. Um, I, I see where everyone's concerns are. Um, and there's a lot of moving parts on this to the town, you know, to have, to have a sewer line put in front of your house for free, basically, is a benefit to your, your homes. You will, you will absolutely have benefit of, a, um, to your housing part, uh, value. Um, would Mr. Costello consider, um, and I don't know if we can even do this, but a deed, deed restriction so that that, that um, be, remains a cul-de-sac, cul that you wouldn't open up that? Yes, I actually, <coughs> it's my son who owns the property and he's building the house there now. That's number three. Yep. Correct. Um, but I'm sure he would do a deed restriction or something saying he's not going to you know and then to yeah. Tony's point you know if down the road you know obviously that makes your property more valuable as well and if you wanted to develop it and could um, that would be something that the planning board would look at and say you know you have a deed restriction you're not allowed to do that you could certainly put a deed restriction on me for the amount of hookups which you would allow or something to quell that I'm not going to put in 10 homes or something. You'd be, the, you'd the problem be is open to that? In 10 years, if there's a sewer line in front of your house, people would argue and have the right to hook up. Um, well, yeah. But that's, that's providing it could be subdivided further. And, and that's I, not I, I don't, we, yeah, we no, don't it's, not our, it's not our department, but Leo had said that right from the beginning. Yeah. He'd be willing to put in right. a deed, uh, you know, something that said, right. you know, there's that many hookups and that's all there is. And that's what I was looking at. Okay, there are two existing on his property, right. two new ones, but there are 10 existing homes. I figured people would be right. just as ambit ambitious as uh, they were a couple that's weeks ago. Yeah, that's more right. restrictive than a deed restriction on a cul de sac. Mm. Right. Ma'am, just your name and address. Erin Lachlan, Lime Nursery Drive. Um, the first question um, that I have, just in my mind. The second question is, uh, are any of you a butters um, to Leo? And do any of you do business with his office? I do. What is that business? Diesel fuel. Okay, can I read? Diesel fuel. So you, 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 you do business with Mr. Yes. Okay. Yes, yeah. have for about 40 years. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Like sure. yeah. No. Well, excuse me. No. 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 Let's. Let's not that's, go there. That's, yeah. Don't Sean, even. Sean works in town. I'm trying to help. To not just people. him. I'm trying to help everyone on Bitter Sweet. And you. And you. Are you tied in? How long have you been there? Twenty-five years. Yeah. People have been there a lot longer. People. I. I figured you'd be doing cartwheels to get tied in. Okay, let's try to help people. Okay. Jesus, right. please don't question integrity up here or anything like that. That's none of us about it. Sean does work with probably four people in this room. So, um, <laughs> that that being said, 
Um, do you have any other questions? Okay. Clarifying questions. Was, um, I, I was, was not following the discussion about whether people on bitter sweet would have to pay because the line is there, or if they would only have to pay for they to choose to connect their house to the line if it's built there. That has not been decided, but I think we believe that if you hooked up, you would pay. If you didn't want to hook up, you wouldn't have to pay. But there might that would be, be a privilege. But there might be a scenario in which a house changes hands. If your system right. fails, mm -hmm. that if fails, people may have to may be compelled to connect only in the event of a failure, not just a transfer yeah. ownership. That that's assuming you. May I? Yeah. So you, I, I think in a normal situation, if you are going to pass your house, you're going to sell your house, Title V fails, and you can build a new system, you can build a new system. If it's in front of your house, you can choose to do that instead, is hook it up, hook up right? I think if, if there's a sewer there and your Title V fails, I think you'd be quite hooked up. That's right. That's okay, right. So that's but that's still going to be cheaper than putting in a new Title V system. Yeah. The so either way, on. you're going to end up incurring that cost. In that yeah. situation, DP and the town Comcom will require you to do something. They would, they would make you hook up to the sewer right. as opposed right. to so putting in a new system. So if it wasn't there and if But it would be much cheaper for you to do that anyway. You'd be building a new system. So were it installed, it would be an option okay. in the event of failure, but not a compulsion after it's installed would be one way that this could be done in fairness. Right. To have it run down the line. Kevin, is, is that what you're thinking as well, yeah. that it would be a privilege fee, the hookup would be there, and if they wanted to hook up, they'd pay it, the hookup fee? It would be a privilege fee. My understanding, uh, Mr. Costello would leave a stub in the road. They would tie into the stub. And I also want to bring up that it, it, where it is an E1 system, each house would be required as part of their connection is to purchase a pump system probably for about $4,500, have it installed and then brought out to the street and then connected electric, electrically. But again, only if they elected to If you elect to do that work. system. Right. Or so you would, right, you'd have to do all the work to get your house to the, to the street. And is it within the select board's power to condition whatever it might approve on not causing the abutters of bittersweet to incur fees? Um, betterments and to require a deep restriction so that that cul-de-sac lot is not open for a throughway. Hmm. I don't, uh, Jim, can we put a deed restriction? That seems you, you can't put a deed restriction on. Put, the put, owner would have to put a deed restriction. We could make that a privilege instead of a betterment. You could require that he put on a deed restriction before he would be, have permission to connect to the source system. Mm -hmm. Right, my suggestion was that the property will not be further subdivided or developed, blah, 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 blah. Right. You, you can do that. But just in, you know, complete openness, we had another lot that the town sold that there's a deed restriction on 18 years ago, and now the person who owns that lot is coming back asking the town to lift the deed restriction so it can be further subdivided. So you can put the deed restriction on, but if Doesn't any restriction the board puts on a further board could potentially lift in the future. Could, could the select board require that the proponent of the, this proposal uh, put a covenant restriction in his own fee that would benefit the abutters and the neighbors on Bittersweet? I think so what we would do, we're not going to be the lawyers to make this project work. I think what you have to do is get together with Mr. Costello and figure out what what ha I mean, we're not going to no negotiate whatever you want in your deed restriction. We'll work it out with him if we choose to put, I mean, we're missing kind of the picture here. We're talking about sewer capacity, not whether he's going to develop something later. Um, that's going to have to be between, you're going to have to work that out with him and, and then come to us and say, he agrees to do blah, 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 and then we'll talk about it then. Um, really, the thing that we're talking about is 98% and 14 homes. I think that's, at least that's what's the forefront in my mind. Um, so I don't want to go too far in whatever the deal would be. Um, I'll ask. Right, thank you. I, I appreciate that. Right, any, any private deed restriction would have to be a private negotiation, I would imagine. Um, right. But it would occur to me that this would be, so that it's not the thin wedge, the thin end of the wedge, that this be taken 
on its own if it is solely a, a support for sewer connection and not a jumping off point for further development that would have to be a I know that he'll talk to you. <laughs> um, so get together and talk and figure out what makes everybody comfortable. I, I get your your concerns. I would probably have the same thing. You know, um, let's talk about the sewer side of things and, and not really the potential development. He said, she said so. Have a question? Yeah. Kevin, is there a sewer on Man Hill Road down to St. Francis Church? Where's that over here? Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, it feels done. What does that mean? What do you Nothing. Mean? Nothing. Nothing. Well, that's further. There's a, there's a paper road. Is it not on the deep plot plan that we go from? Fields down. I think from Fields down to the number three house at least. That's this. Mm. That's the road with yeah, all the locks on it, but yeah. there's been new. Redivide. Read. Is that all wet? Isn't that the one yes. that's all wet yes. as well? Yeah. That's where the uh, drainage <laughs> easement that the town has on those lots. Okay. Any so, other discussions, and then we're going to try and move forward with the conversation. Everyone good in the last one, sir? I had a question to the hometown property owner. Uh, if in the 1990s, um, has he ever uh, buried wetlands on the property? Okay, I don't, so don't even, to us. please. We don't want to go there. What, don't accuse him of doing something that's... A bulldozer ran there for weeks and weeks and okay. weeks. Okay, we're not going to go there. That, right. That's really an issue for the Conservation, Conservation Commission. Commission. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, all right, who has some sort of comment on the topic at hand, which is the sewer system for 14 houses. Well, one of the questions we haven't talked about is if the, if it went down the street, either, I mean, most of the neighbors seem to be here, is there anyone that's interested in tying, you know, uh, hooking up, taking advantage of being on the system? Yes. Um, Linda Carroll, 14 Little Street Drive. Our system is old. We've lived in the house for I'd say 42 years, and we know it needs to be, you know, either replaced um, in the backyard, you know, with the mound and everything. So we would be interested. Yeah. And that's to Sean's point a minute ago. Most people <laughs> love the opportunity yeah, yeah. to hook up to sewer. So um, I think everybody, though, including myself, is concerned yeah. about it opening up the street. Oh, I, I want to change the nature of the neighborhood. Right. All right, we're, right. Now, but to talk about the sewer. Um, that, so my question is, on the sewer, this proposal, we have to look at not just Mr. Costello's, Three. is it four houses? Four houses being added, but potentially 14 houses. Right. Um, because if, it, if, if this is approved, we're not going to, unless there's a moratorium, as Tony, as Mr. B as Chairman Vignani said, unless there's a moratorium, which is, you know, not a good scenario, and all of you wanted to hook up, we have to ha answer the question of, can we even do that? So I agree with Karen, Ms. Canfield, that the number's 14, the potential. This count thing's getting confusing. Mm -hmm. It's only the uh -oh. first meeting. And we can't even be KC either. <laughs> no, I thought of that too. Is the number not 20? It's going to be 13. Uh, because of the current subdivision, which... He just said you're looking at an old plan. That was a, that was a subdivision that was in there before that's no longer... There's four properties that they're there's talking no, about. There's, there's no book and map or surveyor's signature on that map. I don't know what that is. That might be because the assessor's maps point. haven't been updated yet, sir. Yeah, but you, you want to get permission for it. I'm not sure what this is. At some point. It doesn't show but how it's an engineering map in the near future. Or, or, or. I mean, that's a good point. But I, I guess it could. But can I yes. make a suggestion? And I, I don't know. Um, does it make sense for Mr. Costello to go in front of the planning board for us and work out some of these issues? Uh, mm -hmm. Because it just seems like there's a lot of things that have that really fall under their purview that haven't. It really hasn't been answered yet, and we're kind of putting the cart before the horse again. 
Um, but I understand it's almost like a catch-22, right? If you can't get the sewer, you might. But you're already starting to build anyway, correct? Already have a house up, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I, and it's like I said, it's already been subdivided into two four-acre lots there for each one of my children. Yeah. And so. But there seems to be like a lot of documentation that people want to see, Mr. Costello, to to have that faith, right? I'm not questioning you, but it just seems like there there's a lot of information that still needs to get out there to put more faith in all the people that are going to be impacted so that's my only sort of observation is that you know are we doing this before we should be well i think the reason he's probably doing it is because if we're not going to give him sewer why go through that process and the expense of that um I drove by a I'm, sir, I'm sorry. So, so, just please, you got to be called sure. to speak. And uh, so, I'm gonna. My opinion is, I think you guys could probably work out a deal where they would be fine with some sort of restriction on the property to do it, and they'd all be thrilled that they had sewer. But seeing the look on Will's face when he was telling us about the situation of the <laughs> sewer, I don't know how we can put any more houses on right now. I mean, 98.8 percent is just. I, I don't think it's the responsible thing to do right now. I think as soon as we get some I and I in and we get that number down, like Karen was saying, then this would be a project yeah. that could be worked out very easily. I think you could give a deed restriction and they would not worry about a highway going down there and they would be thrilled that they then have hookups to sewer. Um, but the numbers, we're not even talking, we're talking crazy high numbers. So, and Will's nodding, which is reaffirming my, my thought here that I don't think in my opinion that we can we can do this right now and I thought we could two weeks ago as you'll say when we gave those other ten hookups um, and I didn't realize all the pending projects were bringing it up to a level of real concern so that's my two cents yes, Kim. Tony my concern is from a policy standpoint how many other streets are off of streets that have sewerage that would now be able to come in and say to us, well, we're right off of a main street. We're 14 houses. Uh, you know, I, I don't know how many houses in town are potentially, and how are we doing this process? It's just a matter of piecemeal people come in. I mean, we've had that happen with sidewalks, where a neighborhood comes in and says, you know, we want a sidewalk, and someone gets a grant from the state, and all of a sudden, they've got the sidewalk, but then we don't get any more state grant money because they took it. So, you know, I just feel as though I would rather know how many more houses are off of some of these main streets that could be potentially coming in, and shouldn't we have some sort of a system for them to be able to come in and at least get in, get in line? Well, 20 years ago, we formed priority districts. Right. So the, the worst areas got sewer first. And, and we're still waiting on a big one, right? North Situate. Well, that was, yeah, we put a... A line in down the right away, yep. but that just just it just didn't happen. Other priority districts took precedent right. over North Situate. I just have one other question: Does a a house to his point? Does a house that's not on this map that Paul gave us? Yeah, there's another house here. Four years old. Right yeah, right in the back of that one that I right here. Been there for four years, did you say? Yes. Co on uh, 2015. So Karen, just to your, your point, and I probably brought this up about a year ago, this has to be part of our financing plan of that enterprise fund to bring people onto the system. Absolutely. And um, you know, to generate revenue on infrastructure uh, that we sure. already have, and he's being generous enough to build all the things well, which a lot of people will do. Right. You know, they'll right. they'll want a betterment and all of a sudden you have to pay it and you have to pay more than, than the whole right. fees. And, that, and that's exactly the point, is that there are lots of homes that, yeah, you know, it's, it would be quite a burden if we said, hey, we're going to do this, but it's going to cost you X dollars in betterment plus the hookup. Right. They'll be like, thank you, go to the next house. Right. Um, but to your point, should we be asking questions like that? We can't because we don't have the capacity. But we could have been having this conversation at least a year ago. These yeah. people could have been here a year ago, if not longer. Yeah. They would have had this worked out, whether up or down, and they would have been before us six months ago. We kept telling Leo to go back. We'll right. get in touch with you. That's my problem. And then another group, great reason, right. 
two meetings the time in. Yeah. You know, and, and here, you know. Yeah, I know. And, and whether you agree with it or not, you would have. You guys would have all worked this out maybe a year ago. Yeah. Kevin, how long have we been asking them to come back and forth? It's been about a year. That's what I'm concerned about. Okay. Not that I do business with. Them. Yeah. And I, I agree with you, Sean. He's. If he was on the agenda last week instead of this week, it may have been a different story. These folks would have had. Right. They could have had neighborhood meetings about you know, but we kept saying nope. Come back. Well, come guys, back. let's let's back down a little bit. Do we have to approve all 14 right now? Like, is there any room around? Uh, you know compromising that because he's asking for one hookup right now I need right now he's asking for them. one hookup so is there a way in which we can <coughs> prove the one hookup and you know put this on the you know contingent upon I and I the 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 the, the balance of it or I I don't know that's the problem I have is that I think we're I know we have to look at it as all one entity if you will but is there a way to stage it? I guess is my question. Sir, just wait till you're called on, sure. and then you can speak. Okay. Can I mean, the, the, the issue would be is if you put the sewer line down there, and all 14 houses said we want to hook up now. We have to allow them. Yeah. I, I don't know how you say you can't. Right. Because you put the sewer line in, it's yes. there. I do. Um, you know, and they, the residents they have to say hey, it's going to be cheaper and easier for us if we bring a contract and now hook us all up at once. Than doing a piecemeal over time, I don't know how the board says. Well, we have the saw line there, but you can't hook up to it. Yeah. And Paul's going to say, "What if I don't put hookups?" What I'd suggest is um, Leo puts the line in, and the houses, and there's an agreement that because Leo, um, one option would be to let Leo put the line in and all the stubs, and then um, when the capacity is available, the houses could tie in. Either they all tie in at once or you know one at a time, but it'd be subject to the capacity being available because they'd be paying a fee. Um, with regard to the sewer being within a public way, normally the town would take it over, but if we were on that line, you could look at it as being a spaghetti line. There's, there's spaghetti lines in these streets. We have designed several of them. Those are owned by the private individuals. So if anyone wants to tie into them, they have to go to that homeowner. If Leo put this line in and this remained private for a certain amount of time, then the people wouldn't be able to tie in unless Leo gave them permission. And then if they didn't like the proposal that they were working out with Leo, they run a spaghetti line right beside it. That's why they're called spaghetti lines. They can't run a spaghetti line in until they go out and do the perk test and show that the soils fail. Then they have to go to the Board of Health. Then they have to come back to you. Right, but I'm just saying that's well, we're not uh, you know. Two lines right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't. Sorry. I okay. know. Uh, let's get a sense of you know even one house at the numbers we're talking about appears to be not the right time to do it, um, to me. So we've talked about this a bit. We can either postpone it and discuss it another time if you want to vote it, or if someone want to make a motion for something else. I'd rather. In my opinion, I'd, I'd rather postpone because I don't want to vote it down because if we fix some of the I and I, I'd like to give them the opportunity to come back. You, That's sort of what I'm thinking. Could, but realistically, I and I is not going to take in a, is not going to happen overnight. No, I know. Well, and well if, if we have an approved I and I project that's in the works, um, then you're creating that capacity almost over time as you're using capacity in the system. So right. if we had an approved I, &I project that we were going to start doing that was going to remove X thousands of gallons a day, then you can say, right, at the same time we're building this, we're, we're doing the project to create the capacity and they should kind of go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. uh, the issue is we don't have any projects right now going on that are creating capacity with the exception of the ones that are creating capacity for their own project. Right. That makes sense. Well, what is the number with your 98.8 percent is w is assuming seasides up and all the other things that have been improved are up. What's the number without the projected? 93. The it's 93. Okay. 93.9, so essentially 94. Right. Okay, Toll Brothers is over a couple of years theoretically, right. well, although the they're way ahead of schedule as to where they. Right. So, be. sorry. Um, so so we're at nine. Yes, it's still a crazy high number. 
and we're working toward it. To John's point, Mr. Costello has come back again and again and again. I, I agree that with Ms. Curran that I, I think we need to postpone because I think you need to come to an agreement with your neighbors. I think they have legitimate concerns. I don't, I think they're completely um, addressable, um, but that's something that you guys have to sort out. Um, I would like to see the most, you know, I, I'd like to go pull the, the current map to make sure we have all the right information so that everyone knows that we're looking at the same information and um, and that's a very doable thing. Um, and I do, I don't think that a spaghetti line's the solution. I think if we're gonna go this way that it should be in the public um, domain and that we should oversee the, um, the line in the future. I think you're just asking for trouble because uh, you're digging up a street that people live on. I think it should be ours. Well, I mean, the, if I live in the street, I said, why are you digging up my street to put in a saw line that I can't use? Exactly. Exactly. And there's so, no I mean, the threshold question for the board that you kind of identified is even if you had the capacity, would the board approve this project without some sort of agreement with the residents of Bittersweet that said, we don't want it without some sort of guarantee that it's not going to open up? Because um, we, we have I&I &I projects that mm -hmm. we're hoping to get going on that would create some capacity in the system. But would you grant it if the resident said without some sort of guarantee that this is not going to become a through street, we don't want it. Right. Uh, well, and honestly, okay, I'm, I'm going to give Sean the last word. And then we'll just, to just one more thought to kept steal the page from Kevin. Just float the idea of if he fixes an I&I &I project like we did for Jamie. I mean, we suggested it to Jamie Maker, which at the last meeting, right. if we identify. And I just throw that out there. And no, I agree. I so I, I kind of like Marin's so idea. What's the manhole cost, and what's the projected I and I for a manhole cover replacement? Uh, manholes are, are tough to pin down. Uh, to replace a manhole, it's probably what about five hundred in materials and twelve hundred bucks for a manhole. Yeah. To put in a seal manhole. Put in a seal manhole, probably yeah. about twelve hundred bucks. And then it doesn't really do much to take out I and I unless it's uh, against the rain. So if it's tidal or groundwater info and infiltration, just doing a manhole cover doesn't really give you any gains. Okay. Hmm. All right, so uh, I'm gonna just take a temperature of the board and correct me if I'm wrong. I suggest you get together with the neighbors and see if you can work out something that that they can all agree with that it's that they're accepting of the project. And then I think we should postpone this. Um, until we figure out either I and I situations or a way to do it, I, 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 or maybe you guys feel differently than me. I just that number's way too high right now, um, and we've got to have something to counterbalance it to get more houses on there, because I think we are opening it up to 14 or houses at least if we do this project. Well, I'd make a motion to to do the project, but I'm probably alone, so I don't know. You can make a motion. Yeah. Well, I mean. And if it and if it should fail, can what does that mean? Can he come back yeah. six months? Yeah, it's not a zoning article, so if you vote it down, he can come back anytime you want. All right, I move to approve the extension of an existing sewer line to ten homes on Bittersweet Lane, numbers 10, 11, 14, 15, 20, 21, 24, 25, 30, and 31, and four homes on Long Meadow Road, 39, 29, and 29 rear, meeting all the requirements of the town of Situate Sewer Department. Any second? There's no second, so the motion fails. Um, I would also suggest someone getting together with someone in DPW to figure yeah. out how you can make it work so maybe only one house gets hooked up and there's some sort of agreement that everyone can buy into that that, that works. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thanks Thank for coming you. in. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, neighbors, for your input. Thank you. schedule. What? Um, the next item is um, the 830 item. <laughs> the discussion goes for appointment of Special uh, Labor Council, uh, Jim Boudreau, Town Administrator. Yeah, uh, just very quickly, we have uh, an issue uh, with some employees that requires Labor Council. Uh, our current Labor Council has a conflict. It's not able to deal with it, so I asked the board to allow me to hire a Special Labor Council to handle some employee uh, issues that we have. And do you have a labor council in mind? Uh, Hugh 
And now uh, Hugh Cowan, yes. Okay. Attorney Hugh Cowan. Conflict of interest? Sure. No, questions for the board? it's not. It's, I, don't, I don't know anyone by that name. Oh, you. Mm. What? Conflict Didn't you say heart. conflict Sorry. of interest to me? No, 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 conflict is, is labor council. Oh, I'm like, our no. Labor council Sorry. has a conflict. No. Sorry. <laughs> in this particular case, our labor council has a conflict, so we need to hire someone else to handle it. Would you like a motion, Tony? Yes, please. Move to appoint special labor council. Move to approve an appointment of special labor council. <laughs> second. Uh, motion by Mr. Harris, second by Ms. Curran. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous, 5-0. trying to find a stupid thing. Okay, now new business. Um, we have a one-day malt and wine and malt license. Can I have a motion? Move that the Board of Selectmen approve one day wine and malt licenses to tailor made bartending for an event at the Situate Maritime Center on May 25th, 2019, from 12 to 4 p.m. Uh, do we do it separately or together? Do them separately. Okay. I have a second. Second. Second by Ms. Kern. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Aye. Move that the Board of Selectmen approve one day wine and malt license to Riva Restaurant for an event at the Situate Maritime Center on June 1st, 2019, from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Second. Second by Ms. Kern. All in favor? Aye. 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 Moving on to the next one is some annual license renewals. Davis parking lot. Move to bo um, the Board of Selectmen approve the parking lot license to the Davis Family Trust Davis parking lot for the 2019 season. Second. Second. Further discussion? This is the lot over by Hummerock, right to the left in the entrance. Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. And the Hawker Peddler licenses? Uh, move that the Board of Selectmen approve Hawker Peddler licenses to South Shore Refreshments LLC doing business as Dell's Lemonade for the 2019 season. Second. Um, second by Mr. Harris. All in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Move that the Board of Selectmen approve a Hawker Peddler license to Burt's Ice Cream for the 2019 season. Second. Second by Mr. Harris. All in favor? Aye. 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 Me do it. Yep. <laughs> Move that the Board of Selectmen approve a Hawker Peddler license to Ahmed Akalatabi doing business as Zach's Ice Cream for 2019 season for the 27th year he's done it. Second. <laughs> Second by me. Mr. Harris. All in favor? Aye. 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 Move that the Board of Selectmen approve the Hawker Peddler license to Nona's Ice uh, uh, Homemade, sorry, Nona's Homemade Inc. for 2019 season. Second, Second by Mr. Sorry. Harris, all in favor? Aye. 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 Um, Maureen, we're not doing uh, areas for these things like we did years ago. They're these are established. So they just go wherever they want? Yes, they're established. They go wherever they want. They follow the Hawker Peddler policy. Okay. Yes. Great. Other business? We have uh, any liaison reports? Karen? I don't have any leaves. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, <laughs> wait, 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 at the next meeting. <laughs> yeah, when do we do that? Next week? Next meeting. Just next meeting. anyone you don't want. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I figured would happen. <laughs> uh, more anything? Um, nope. It was at conservation last night, so they're moving forward with the fields and should, um, they're going out to bid for the, um, not the fields, you know what I mean, the, the um, all the parking lots, so they're going out to bid for all the parking lots soon, so hopefully we can get that done so folks can start going walking through our walking through our trails that's right yeah. trails great sorry wrong thing anyone else one thing I, I well, no 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 you go, no, you go. the shellfish commission has been Heck on fire <laughs> <laughs> i might need a backup they meet like once a week so let me see if i can the last meeting so <clears throat> they had a drone fly over show an aerial map they had greg moore stool little mm -hmm. engineering because one of the commission members has a relationship with them, so he did some preliminary preliminary things. Uh, Jim okayed some title searches, really minimal amount of money, just to about four hundred bucks. All right, just to make sure the lines are what they are, and so they are just really enthusiastic. They are talking about how people are gonna, uh, individuals or groups are gonna come up with these plots, whether it be a lottery system and, um, or wait, you know, first come first serve um, experience. So they're just really, really busy. Um, it's very exciting stuff. Um, sounds like we might 
partner with Cohasset, maybe it's, mm. you know, I mean, we bought it right there. So, you know, there's been a lot of discussion, you know, access and things like that. They, they've, they're really excited and, uh, right. you know, so. Can we ask That's Jim, do you, do you have an update on the widow's walk work? That's fun to say. I can. Uh, Oh, is that, oh, is that yeah, you? that's our committee. So they're just as enthusiastic, mm. and they're coming to present to us in the next couple of meetings. And I'm meeting with them tomorrow night. Okay. 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 Yeah, so they've got capital plans, marketing plans, um, and another really enthusiastic group. What are some of their ideas? They'll, they'll, they'd shoot Don't me. Oh, uh oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Jeez, you surprise, liberty surprise. to say. Yeah. <laughs> they they almost don't want to talk about it when I'm at the meeting. Like, <laughs> he's here. <laughs> Champagne wishes and caviar dreams. But <laughs> I, have to, I have to go tomorrow night and say, yeah. Fell down. But that's yeah. that's that's a that's good, okay. yeah, good problem. Yeah. I mean, they're just yeah. rare we'll to go. Have limited come. resources, and we're going to have to tailor our. Right. Our plan of the resources. Well, well that subject, can I? I mean, you probably don't know, but this rain can't be helping the rounds. Yeah, it's bad. Uh, have we looked recently. We've had good Saturdays. Yeah, it's, um, yeah, it's been really it's crowded. Better than it was last it's, it's, year, which oh, was good. better than the year before. Definitely but up. Still not pre drought levels. Um, okay. I went by Saturday. It was packed. I went by Sunday morning. Um, it just started to rain. It was packed. Good. So actually, the weekends haven't been that bad weather-wise. Good. Um, so as Nancy said, the numbers are better than they have been, but not where they should be. Right. But uh, the course is in great shape. The course is in great shape. I mean, grass is growing like crazy. Karen, <laughs> <laughs> anything? Mm -mm. Okay. So uh, correspondence. Uh, there's a few things. The um, Alcohol Beverage Control Commission has sent us a notice uh, that there will be a meeting on Jamie's Pub, today. a hearing on Jamie's Pub on Tuesday. Oh, it's today. Today. It was today at 12 o'clock. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Did anyone want to go? Uh, so he presented to the ABC for that. Um, there is the, oh, this is great. The Citroen Fire Department um, will be doing their annual Firefighters Memorial Service, which will be Sunday, uh, June 9th. At Lawson Common at 9:30. Um, before that is a, a ceremonial breakfast at St. Mary's Nativity Parish Center at 8 a.m. Um, and this honors um, the fire department. And there was a member that um, lost his life in service many, many years ago. But it is an annual um, event nationally, and it's really, it's really moving and touching. So if anyone's around, it's it's worth going out to the common. Mm -hmm. um, what day is that? On June 9th. June 9th. I'm sorry, June Sunday. 9th, yep. Sunday mm -hmm. at 9 30 on the 9th. common. Um, I'll be in Ireland. I, can go. I will go. I will yeah. definitely go. It's a great thing. Right. Um, I think there was one more thing. Um, Lorraine, did you give me something in the packet? Or your vice chair can go. I can go. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> then I think that's okay. correspondence. I like Good. to go. So go. All right. Can I have approval of minutes? Move to accept the minutes for May 7th and May 13th Board of Selectmen meetings. Second. Second by Mr. Harris. All in favor? Aye. 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 That's four to zero and one abstention for both. You're going to be KEC. Okay. <laughs> okay. And lastly, can I have uh, any other comments? Any other last thoughts? Um, I do want to say one thing. Uh, can we put on a future agenda to find out what the status is of the um, building on the, remember we didn't pass building the um, bathrooms and the um, concession stand at the field, and we were going to somehow reconvene and discuss that? Sure, well right now we're uh, waiting to get some quotes for architects okay. to design the building so that the um, contractor can actually give us a price on the building. So. Okay. He's so that is moving Move along. I, I authorize him right away to, to reach out to a couple of architects, get a couple of prices to actually design okay. the building and get a price. Thank you. So, All right. Can I have a motion to adjourn and sign documents? So moved. Second. Uh, moved by Ms. Kearns. Second by Mr. Harris. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you all. Good